the Dante my show. My bunkie, he come to me. He like, yo, D, do me a favor. I say, what, what is it? He like, hey, listen, at the dinner time, stay out the cell. Give me about 15, 20 minutes, and then you can come up. Matter of fact, when the white sheet is down, then you can come in. It's not unusual that your celly will ask you to not to come in the cell. He might want to talk to his girl. He might try to conduct some business that he don't want you involved in. You never know what the case may be. So it's not unusual for a request like that from your bunkie. So I said, all right, cool. Dinner time rolls around. I'm downstairs watching TV. I think they got a special on the National Geographic Discovery Channel about when tigers attack. About 15 minutes roll around and I get up and I go upstairs to see, is he done doing what he doing? I hear some noises, like some grunting noises. So I'm like, man, I know he ain't in there messing with no punk. I don't think he messed with punks. He might just be in there, you know, talking to his girl on the phone, getting one off. Yeah, that's what that is. That's what that is. So I walks off. The white sheet was still up. So I walks off. Then about 10 minutes later, I come back upstairs and the white sheet is down. So I walk in the cell. I hop on top of my bunk and I'm like, I'm like, you straight, man? He like, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm real good. I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, prison stuff, ain't nothing to it. It is what it is. So I go to bed. I get woken up around three o'clock in the morning. Now the first movement time is 6 a.m. I'm told that a detective want to talk to me in the chaplain. So I'm like, what the heck going on? So I get up, get my stuff on, and this guard escort me to the chaplain. So I'm sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting, and I end up going to sleep. About an hour later, it's about four o'clock in the morning, I get brought back to my cell. And I'm like, yo, what, what's going on? I thought a detective wanted to talk to me. You know, the CO like something came up. I'm like, okay, that's weird. So I hop back in the bed. I go back to sleep. Count time. So I get up out my bed, make the bed up, wake my bunkie up, and we stand up for count. We go back in, and I lay back down. He leaves out the cell. I'm going to say about 40 minutes later, I get up, get my towel, and I, and I get in the shower. About five minutes later, I'm heading back upstairs, and I see the white sheet up. I'm like, what the heck is this dude doing? I'm like, yo, 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 I'm about to come in. He like, yo, yo, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up. So I'm like, dude. I'm not waiting, man. I'm about to come in. So he like, just, just, just chill. Just wait. Just wait a minute. Wait a minute. So I'm like, all right, man. So he said, he said, come in, come in, come in, come in. So I come in and he look all dishuffled. I'm like, what? I'm like, man, what is you doing? Oh, no, I'm just in here working out. And um, I don't want people to see what I'm in here doing. I'm just working out. So I'm like, you just working out. What you mean you don't want people to see what you, all right, whatever. So as a courtesy, you got to turn your back when your celly getting dressed. So he stands over there by the cell with his back turned. And I'm over there by the toilet, put my stuff on. And he like, yo, bro, could you hurry up? I'm like, what you mean can I hurry up? You know, I'm putting my deodorant on. I'm like, what you mean can I hurry up? I'm saying, man, chill out. He like, yeah, yeah, just th hurry up, man. I, I need to say, I need to hold the cell. I'm like, I'm like, God dang, man, can you chill? just wait a minute? I just got up in here. He like, yeah, yeah, I know, but you know, you break my concentration. I'm like, all right, man, whatever. I said, can I brush my teeth? Can I at least brush my teeth? He like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, man, come on. I'm brushing my teeth and I hear like a walkie-talkie, and I'm like, oh, it must be a dip coming down. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm brushing my teeth or whatever. So I get done. So he's like, yo, bro, yeah, just come back. Just come back later. So I'm like, all right. So he damn near pushed me out the cell. So I leave and I hit the yard. We out there for two hours. You know, I'm talking to my people, getting the latest gossip on the yard. I always tell y'all, inmates always gossiping. You think women gossip? No, men gossip way worse than women. I come off the yard and I go back to my block. And my bunkie standing up on the second tier looking at me. He motioning like this for me to come up there. So I go up there. I'm like, I'm like, what's up? He was like, hey, bro, I didn't mean to, you know, try to rush you out the cell, but hey, um, psh, man, there's some wild stuff going on right now. I said, what's up? He was like, I'll tell you about, I'll tell you about it later. But listen, at dinner time, again, can you not come to the cell and, you know, I'm going to be doing something up in there. So I'm like, man, I'm, I'm like, bro, what's going on? What you got going on up in here? He like, no, nah, no, nah, it, ain't, it ain't nothing. I'm like, check this out. Whatever you got going on in there, he like, no, 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 don't worry about it. Ain't no, it, it ain't going to get you in trouble. It ain't nothing that's going to get us in trouble. I'm not in here. I'm not moving nothing. I'm not selling nothing. I, I'm just, I'm just, just, just trust me. I, I got this. So I'm like, all right, all right, whatever, man. So like clockwork, this would go on for five days, five days straight. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
So Saturday rolls around. I finally asked him, like, yo, bro, I'm coming upstairs. Next time, he he like, bro, man, just chill. I'll let you know what's going on. I'll let you. I'm like, come on, man. I don't like being in the dark, man. What's going on? Man, I tell you what, Monday, I'll let you know what's going on. Matter of fact, we're going to fast forward all the way to Monday at exactly 10 p.m. at the dinner time. So I come in from the lunchroom, a.k.a. the chow hall, and I go upstairs. And he right there at the door with a smile on his face. I'm like, all right, so what? what's the deal? What's going on? So he got up real close up to me. He was like, hey, what I was doing in the cell, you know, you can't tell nobody. Matter of fact, what you see in the cell, you can't tell nobody at all. So I'm like, what? I said, what's in there? He like, it ain't what's in there, it's who in there. I say, what? Who, who in there? So he was like, come on. So we go in there. I see the CEO, Sarah. Sarah is an old white woman, late 60s or early 70s. I really can't tell, but this woman was old. I see what I see, but it's not processing up here. I'm like, what the heck? So he like, yeah, 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 yeah. He like, Sarah, this my man's right here. He cool, he cool. I let him know what's going on. And so she got up and she was like, mm, okay. So I'm like, okay, what? Then he was like, well, you know, this this my thing. This my boot thing up in here. And I'm like, okay. And he was like, he was like, yeah, I've been talking to her. And, you know, she like, yeah, she'll let you join too. And I'm like, join what? He like, man, that's how we be getting down up in here. This my girl. I was like, nah, I'm straight. I'm good. She was like, what, you gay or something? I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm practicing celibacy. I'm in here locked up. I got 10 years, man. I'm not, you know, I'm a spiritual man and I don't, I don't, I don't in, involve in them type of things. So she looked me up and down with concern on her face. Do I got to worry about him? He like, no, no, no. Let me, let, let me talk to him. So me and him step out the cell. He like, bro, what's up with you, man? What's wrong with you? I said, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm not touching. Now you crazy? Not even the fact that if we in here doing something to this woman and another guard walk past to hear it and come in there and they see us got her bust down spread eagle style up in here. This woman can scream that we snatched her in this cell and violated her. I'm not about the hags, no. And for that, mm -mm. nah, I'm good. I'm straight. He like, no, no, man, this is my girl, man. Chill out, chill. I got this. I said, not even that, man. I don't, I don't look. I, 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 I uh, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm straight. I, I'm not attracted to that at all, at all. I want no piece of that. He like, well, all right, man, but just all right, all right. I said, don't worry, man. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm not finna mess up what you got going on. That's, that's you. Trust me. I'm good. That's all you. I'm good. I'm straight. So we go back in the cell. I hop on my bunk. And sure enough, she get to taking her stuff off and he get to taking his stuff off and he busts her down right there on the bed. I'm like, ugh, ugh. So, you know, they do what they do and he get up and she get up and she putting her stuff back on. She adjusting her stuff and then she walk out and he like, man, bro, you do not know what you missing. I'm straight. I'm good. Yeah, you, That's all you, man. He like, man, you crazy, man. I would have, yeah, you just don't know. So later on that night, I asked him, I'm like, yo, how long this been going on with y'all? He was like, man, I've been busting her down for like three weeks now. I said, oh, okay. I said, I mean, like, how did that happen? One of my homeboys that went home, he put me on her. Man, she liked tall black dudes. I said, oh, okay. So I said, oh, so she been getting around up here. He was like, nah, nah, it's just me. She was messing with an old boy, and he left, and he put me on to her. So, you know, me and her been rocking out every since. She supposed to be bringing me a cell phone up here, too. Whenever you need to use it, we'll crack it open. I said, I right, bet. So I'll go to bed. So two weeks will go on. Either every day or every other day, he'll be in there busting her down, spread eagle style. Sometimes I'll be in a cell. And sometimes I won't be in a cell. Y'all remember earlier in the story when I told y'all I was led out the cell at three o'clock in the morning to go to the chaplain because a so-called detective wanted to talk to me? She was that guard that led me out. I guess that was the time that she wanted to get her freak on with my celly. So, yeah, she'll roll up in there around 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and they'll get their freak on. She didn't work Saturday or Sunday. 
So we're going to fast forward to Saturday morning. It's about four o'clock in the morning. My bunkie like, ow, ow. So I'm like, man, what's this dude doing? Is he having a bad dream? Because the way I'm laying on my back at this time, and I just keep hearing, ow. Now, usually when you're silly, go use the bathroom, you turn the other way. And if you sleep, you just knocked out. So I keep hearing him say, ow. Then I hear like the toilet, like pee dropping in the toilet. So I turn my body this way, face the wall. And he like, ow. I'm like, I said, you straight, man? He like, yeah, no, nah, man, I'm not straight, man. I said, what's going on? He said, man. I think this be burnt me. And I and I turned like, burnt you? He was like, ah, oh, man, yeah, 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 ah. So I'm like, that's crazy. So he flushed the toilet and he got back in the bed and he like, ah, oh, man, man, I think this be burnt me. This is why I say prison is like hell. Every time you think you got a good thing going on, it's something that comes with it. Something bad that comes with it. So while he was in there getting his freak on, but well, old lady Sarah gave him a little gift. And now he's suffering through it. So he just tossing, turning, groaning, moaning all throughout the night. I don't put my headphones on, blocking out his results of him fornicating in prison with this prison guard. At the count, he put a request in to go to medical. To the right of my cell, one of my homeboys from Detroit. And he tell me, he like, yo, what, what was going on with dude last night? I heard him last night, you know, like moaning and groaning, like, what, what's up? What, what was, what was going on with dude? I said, well, shoot. I mean, maybe he was having a nightmare or something. I don't know. He said, oh, okay, I was just checking. So, you know, I go out to the yard, walking the track with my homeboys. My silly come out there on the yard, and he come right to me. He said, hey, D, let me talk to you right quick. So I break off from the pack, and me and him get to walking. He like, man, man, this beat done gave me gondorrhea, man. I was like, you want to use no protection? He was like, no, man. Why would I use protection on her, man? She can't have kids. Shoot, I'm the only one that she messing around with in here, so why would I? I wasn't even thinking about no protection. Why? I said, you sure that you the only one she messing around with? He was like, yeah, that's what she told me. I said, well, I mean, you know, just like in the streets, you know, you can't trust these women out here. I said, well, it is what it is. He said, man, I can't wait till Monday when she come up in here. I can't wait. So we're going to fast forward to Monday. So Monday roll around. It's count time. Me and him outside the cell. Sarah and another CO is doing count. So they when they get to us, he looking at it like this. About 10 minutes later, here she come in the cell. She like, what was that all about? He like, man, you burnt me. You gave me gondorrhea. She was like, what are you talking about? He was like, yeah, you the only person I've been with up in here. I ain't no homo. I'm not gay. You're the only person I've been with up in here. You gave me gonorrhea. She like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I do not know what you're talking about. You the only man that I've been with. He like, man, come on, man. Just tell me the truth, man. You messing with somebody else in here? She like, no, why would I do that? So I say, yo, I'm about to head out, y'all. So I get off the bunk and I roll out. As I'm going downstairs, this dude named Jay Rock approached me. He like, hey, bro, let me, let me, can I talk to you over here for a minute? I'm like, yeah, what's up? You know, I'm not trying to disrespect you, but I done caught on to your play. I'm like, what is he talking about, my play? He like, yeah, man, I already know the deal, man. I know you breaking off CO Sarah. I'm like, what? He was like, man, come on, bro. I, I, I know what you up there doing. She always going to your cell. You forgot my cell is down here. I can see right to your to your cell. I see her going in and out of your cell all the time. Little to little do he know, nah, that ain't my play. That's his play. So I'm like, nah, man, I don't know what you're talking about. So I said, listen, we ain't got nothing to talk about. He was like, well, I tell you what, I don't care. I don't give a F. I'm going to tell on you. I'm going to drop a kite. So I'm like, for real, you going to do that? He like, listen, man, I'm not trying to disrupt what you got going on, but I'm just trying to get in on it. So I'm like, what What do you think we doing? He like, see, I knew it. I got you. I got you. I know y'all was doing something. So I say, you know what? So I'm thinking to myself, like, you know what? I don't like this dude. So I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him exactly what he's looking for. So I say, you know what? 
Come with me. Let, let, let's go talk. Come on. Let's go in and talk business. He's like, yeah, yeah. See, I knew I liked you, man. I knew I liked you. So we walking around the pot. And I'm like, okay, listen. Yeah, Sarah, a freak, man. This, that, woo de woo man. She be doing this to me. She be doing that to me. She be breaking it down. She be spread eagle style all over the bed. He like, word? He said, oh, man, I knew she looked like, I knew she was a freak. So I'm just geeking his head up. So he's like, man, what's up on the play, man? Is she bringing anything in? I'm like, no, nah, we ain't get to that point yet. But I said, check this out. I'm going to put you on her, though. If that's what you want, I'm going to put in a request for us to switch sales, right? Because he didn't have no selling. So I'm breaking this whole play down. So we put the request in. Birds of the feather flock together, right? So I shoot upstairs and tell my celly what the play is. He know what you and Sarah have been doing. He's like, how you know that? I said, well, he been watching. Matter of fact, not only he been watching, he think it's me that's doing that with Sarah. He like, word? I said, yeah. He like, who, who? I said, J-Rock. He said, oh, J-Rock my dude. J-Rock my dude. I said, well, that's even better. He was like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that'd be a good idea. He like, yeah, but man, I need to figure out if she messing around with anybody else up in here. I said, in the meantime, just ask her to bring her condoms. He like, yeah, you right, man. You right. See, I like you, man. You smart. You smart. That does not take a rocket scientist to come up with that idea. So about four days later, the transfer happened. I get my stuff. I take it downstairs. He get his stuff. He bring it upstairs. I'm out of the equation now. So later on that night, around three o'clock in the morning, after Sarah do her rounds, she stopped right at the cell and goes in and the white sheet goes up. So I'm like, oh, oh, so he what? Oh, so, oh, this, just, oh, there you go. Right there. I can only imagine what they're in there doing to Sarah. Ugh. So this would go on and go on for about two weeks. My ex Sally and Jay rock ended up getting into a fight. I don't know what it was over, but Jay rock ended up knocking my Sally teeth out his mouth. He took out all his fronts right here. I don't know what it was about. It could have been about Sarah. It could have been about them making a play together and somebody tried to backstab one or the other. Remember this is prison, right? Whatever it was, they got the rumbling in that cell and my ex Sally got his teeth knocked out. So they go to the hole. A day later, Sarah approached me. She say, hey, let me talk to you. I said, what's up? She was like, hey, um, I've been thinking about you. And I'm like, okay, what's up? She was like, well, I, I, I want to, I want you to, I want to come, I'm, I want to put you, I'm putting you, I'm putting you in your old cell. And I'm like, for what? She was like, because I want to talk to you tonight. So I'm like, all right, all right, whatever. See, I'm going to tell you all something. I knew what she wanted, but what can I really do? If I tell her no, she can bring pressure on me. She could make my life a living hell. But remember I told y'all, this is day house. What am I supposed to do? Ride a grievance? Ride a kite? To the, to the CO, to the sergeant? to the warden and say, hey, your employee trying to mess around with me? Come on, man. So I'm like, no, I really like my cell. She like, come on, I'm transferring you. She walked off. So I'm like, all right, man, whatever. True to her word, here I go, packing my stuff up and I'm bringing it back to my old cell. So she comes in there. She was like, well, since my husband isn't here no more, you know, I need something from you. I'm like, what you need from me? So she walk up to me. She get close to me. And I'm like, she got this look in her eyes. And I'm like, oh. So she get up close up on me. She got this look in her eye. And she like, well, I'm going to get mine. And you going to give it to me. And she grabbed me. And I'm like, yo, yo, yo. And she like, yeah, I'll be back here tonight. She like, uh-uh, I want you here. And now, right now, drop. I'm like, yo, yo, chill, chill. She said, uh-uh, I need, I want you now. I said, wait, 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 wait. I said, so you just going to take it? So she like, yeah, come on. I said, listen, I, I need some time to warm up to this. Y'all got to remember, man, this woman got to be pushing her late 60s, 
early 70s, right? I just felt like my skin was crawling at this point in time. So she like, yeah, come on, come on, let's go. So she trying to undress me and I'm like, yo, chill, chill. So I grabbed her by her shoulders I'm like, and I like, like grab her strong and I'm like, yo, just chill out, wait a minute. So she's like, oh, I like that. So she trying to like kiss me, like come in and kiss me. I'm like, so I'm bobbing and weaving like this, right? So she's like, oh yeah, I like that. I like, you like to fight. So I'm like, uh, I, I, I say, listen, I need, I need some time, man. I'm, she like, I'm not trying to hear that. So she was like, I'm going to be back. I will be back. So she leave out the cell and I'm like, oh my goodness. Right now, I'm like, what did I get myself into? Maybe I should have dropped the kite. Maybe I should have checked in. Maybe, maybe I should have. So I'm sitting at the bottom bunk and I'm thinking to myself, like, I am not about to let this woman touch me again. It's not going to happen. I know dudes out there be like, man, you crazy, man. I would have broke that down right there in the cell, right then and there. I don't care how old she is. Let me tell y'all something. I got morals and I got standards. And them standards right there is way below my minimum. That ain't happening. That's out. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like, ugh, ugh, how I'm going to get out of this? Because not only she looked like a sweet old lady, but she was aggressive with it. I'm talking about she grabbed me. She was aggressive with it. So I'm thinking like, okay, maybe if I, maybe if I just break her off this one time and just make it real bad, maybe I should, maybe I should just jackhammer it and just be real lousy with it. Then I got to thinking about she giving out STDs. I'm not touching that, man. I'm I'm just going to have to go to the hole. Some, I'm just going to have to tell something. But then again, I'm thinking like, you know, I want to blow. I don't know who this woman connected with. You know, I don't know what's going to happen to me back there in the hole. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to have to man up and do what I got to do. But I'm not going into this woman without no protection. That ain't happening. That's out. I came to prison STD free. I'm leaving out STD free. And that's the bottom line to it. In the last video, I forgot to tell y'all to hit that like button. So I'm sitting there and I'm contemplating what am I going to do? How I'm going to get out of this? Dante, use your thinking. Use your head. Use your head. How you going to get out of here? So I just lay back on my bed and I'm like, maybe I should just put somebody on her. Okay, well, no, nah, I can't do that because can't trust nobody in here. So now I'm thinking like, well, maybe I could just, you know, break her, break her off, but do it all sloppy and do it all nasty that she'll be like, I don't want to mess with him no more. Something like that. So all these things is going in my head. At this particular time. So I'm like, okay. All right. So then I walk out the cell and she got the control booth and she eyeing me like an evil stalking a mouse. Here she go. I feel her eyes on my back. Ooh, goosebumps. The hairs on my skin got the raising up. Y'all see that? That's just that right there. Let y'all know that this really happened. Y'all, y'all see my goosebumps? Y'all see the hair on my right there that's lifting up? Oh, I felt that woman's eyes breathing on my back. So I'm walking and I'm like, ugh. So I'm walking, I go sit down and I'm watching TV. So I feel a presence approaching me and she's standing there. She like, do you need anything? I said, no, I don't need nothing. She was like, well, I'm going to be by your cell around 2 a.m. I said, all right. She was like, okay, I see you then. So she got to walking off. And then I, I thought to myself, like, you know what? If this got to happen, it got to happen the right way. So I got up and I, I walked up on her. I said, hey, do me a favor. Bring some condoms. She looked at me. She was like, what, you don't trust me? I said, listen, man, I heard what happened to my Sally. And, you know, I just don't, I, I just want to, I just want to be protected. That's all. She was like, mm, okay, what you, what, what, what? Magnum. I said, how you know? <laughs> so she walk off and she go to the control booth and I go back and go sit down, sit down and I get to watch the TV and I hear the control booth door close. And so I look over there and I see her walking towards my way again. So she get up on me and she put her hand like right here, like on my right here. And she like 
massage massaging it a little bit. I said, she like, she like, you like that? I said, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then she stopped and she was like, yeah, you're going to get me in trouble up in here. I said, no, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Now, it might look like I was flirting back with her, but y'all, I was in a bad spot. I was in, I was stuck in between a hard place and a hard place. Okay. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So she like, yeah, you got a whole lot. I'm going to, I'm going to take my time with you. So I'm like, I said, yeah, what we going to do? She like, yo, you going to find out. I'm not, I got a lot of wisdom and I got a lot of skills, baby. And she just walked off and I'm like, ugh. So now I'm like, man, this is real. I said, you know what? I got to get out of here. I got to get out. I got to get out of this situation. Now I'm thinking to myself, like, maybe I should start an argument with somebody so I can get put in a hole. What about that argument might lead to a fight? What about that fight might lead into a stabbing? What about that stabbing might lead into a death? Then I'm thinking like all over because I didn't want to break down Officer Sarah. I'm just going to have to break it down. So now it's time for us to lock down. And I can't even sleep. I can't sleep at all, man. I can't sleep at all. I'm trying to get some rest, but that's all I'm thinking about. This woman putting her nasty body against mine. So I'm laying there. I'm like, man, this really going to happen, man. Ugh. About 2.30 rolls around, and I hear her walking down the tier. You know, she doing her rounds. She walked right past my cell. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, man, it's just a matter of time. Ugh. So, so true to her word, she ended up coming back about six minutes later. She come up in the cell. I'm acting like I'm asleep. So I'm wrapped up in my cover, and I'm holding it tight, like from here to here. I'm rolled up tight like a fruit roll up. So she come in there, and she like, Dante, Dante. And I'm, and I'm acting like I'm asleep hard. She's like, Dante. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. She's like, Dante. So I hear her and she was like, you ain't sleep. So she got to shaking me. So she was like, oh, okay. You want to play a game? I I only got time. So then she's like trying to pull it, like pull the cover off of me. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you a hold up. So I'm wrapped up like this, acting like I'm asleep. And she grabbing the cover like this, like just trying to get aggressive, trying to take it off. But I'm holding on to this cover for dear life, right? So she's like, man, stop playing, stop playing. We come on, let's let, let's do this, let's do this. She like, yeah, let's do this, let's do this. So I'm like, man, no, man, no, stop, stop. She like, she like, what you mean, no? I say, I say, you got the condoms. She like, oh, she like, oh, oh, no, I forgot. I get them next time. I said, no, no, we can't do that. She like, no, come on, let's do it. I said, no, man, I I no, I'm, I'm not, I can't do it. No, you gotta go get them. She's like, I can't go get them. They're in the car. I'm like, well, I, we, we can't do nothing then. It can't happen. She like, all right, all right, whatever. All right, I'll be back, I'll be back. She like, yeah, you better be ready tomorrow. So she left off the cell. So I'm thinking like, yes, victory. I won this battle. I won this time. So later on that evening, I comes back from the yard and she's standing in front of my cell with another guard. So I'm like, hmm, what the heck going on? So I walk up there. I'm like, what's going on? they like, this your cell, right? I said, yeah. So I'm looking at cell like, what the heck going on? So she like, staying out here, we finna shake your cell down. I'm like, what? So they go in there and they shaking it down. I'm like, man, what is y'all looking for? They're like, well, we heard that you was doing tattoos up here. I'm like, tattoos? Man, I don't tattoo nobody. So I don't know how to do no tattoos. They going under my bed, flipping my mattress, going through all my personal belongings, everything. They going through my tote. They going through my locker, all that. They basically mess my cell up. And I see her too. And she and she been extra too. So I'm like, man, what the heck is this all about? I'm like, all right, whatever. So they was like, well, go in there, clean it back up. And they walked off. So I, so I go in the cell and I'm like, man, what the heck going on? So about 30 minutes later, she come to my cell. And I'm like, yo, what, what's up? What, what's going on? You couldn't give me the heads up? Like somebody talking about I'm tattooing? She was like, that's just a warning. Deny me tonight, and it's going to get worse. And she walked out. So I'm like, this B, she the one set this up because I wouldn't give it to her. Well, she did this. She set this up. Remember I told y'all, this is their house. They do what they want to do up in here. 
she had the power to get me shook down because I wouldn't give her the you know what. So I'm thinking like, okay, now this just turned real serious. Right before lockdown, she come up to me and she like, I got them. So she showed me the, the gold package. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool bet. So she was like, you better be ready too. And don't be playing no games tonight. So I went in the cell and I'm thinking like, what can I do to get out of this? I already know this chick crazy. So what can I do to get out of this and not get in trouble? So I'm like, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. What am I going to do to get out of this? So I lay down and I get ready for this unholy consummation. So she come in there around three o'clock and she like, okay, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. So then I'm like, all right, hold on, hold on. So she's like, yeah, come on. So she laid me down on my back and she kissed me on the cheek and I just lost it. I just melted like, oh my goodness. Ugh. So she was like, all right, come on. So she gets, so she take the condom off. She opened the package up and I'm like, all right, just hold on. Give me a minute. So then I get up and I go to the toilet. So she like, hurry up, hurry up. So I, so I open it and I'm fumbling with the wrapper and I go, oops. And it kind of fall in the toilet. She's like, what happened? What happened? I said, oh, man, I dropped it. I dropped the condom. She was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? I said, no, I just dropped it. You know, it's dark up here. And she was like, keep your, keep your voice down. Keep your voice down. And then I was taught. So then I was like, <clears throat> like, cough loud. And she was like, what are you doing? I said, I said, man, I got a bad cough. So I got the coughing loud. Like, <clears throat> <clears throat> She was like, you making too much noise, so she leave out the cell. You know, thank God. And I said, okay, good. I'm gonna dodge this bullet. But she came right back in there with another condom. She was like, all right, I'm not playing with you. Come on. Here, let, let's do it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put it on you. I'm gonna tell y'all something. A man can be violated by a woman. A lot of you guys out there might be like, oh, man, I would have broke that down. A lot of you cats out there ain't got no principles, no morals. A lot of y'all standards are substandard. I couldn't do it. So she like, no, I'm going to put it on for you. I'm going to put it on for you. And I'm like, ugh. So then I'm like, you know what? So as she, so she, so she grabbing at my pants, but I'm holding my pants for like dear life. She said, so she like, man, stop. What are you doing? Come on. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. She like, so you really going, you really going to do this? I'm like, man, I'm straight. So she like, all right. Okay. So, okay. You want to be like that? All right. So she walk out the cell. So at this point in time, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know what? I don't even care no more. I don't care. Whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. So it's count time. And I get up to open my cell door to go out for count and my door won't open. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? They say, you're on lockdown. I said, for what? I got up for count. This woman, it, it had come to me later on in the day that this woman wrote me up for being vulgar, talking to her vulgar. I ended up getting a ticket, right? But she said she didn't want to press charges against me for talking to her vulgar. So they gave me a warning. I had to be in my room for two days, like a child. That was her retaliation against me. So on the third day, I finally get out. And she walk up to me with a big smile on her face. And she like, how's my poor baby? And I'm like, I said, you dead wrong, man. She was like, what? What did I do? I said, you you, you treacherous. Why did you do that? She was like, what What did I do? You know I can make your life way worse than it is, right? And mate, I end up going to breakfast. I got my tray, walking down the line. They put the frozen apples on there. They put the two hard-boiled eggs on my tray. Burnt, toe up, Texas toast on there. And I grabbed me a milk. As I turn to my left to exit out the line, boom. Guess who's standing there? See yo Sarah. Boom. My tray get tipped. Everything flies this way. And she say, watch your step, inmate. So dude's looking at me like, what the heck going on over there? Sarah will go on to pick and mess with me for the next four days. I go to the shower and she'll cut the water off. Or I'd be in the shower and she'd cut the hot water off and it'd be just cold water. Or I would have random shakedowns in my cell. 
Like I said, this will go on for about four days. Saturday rolls around. Remember, I told y'all she, she does not work on a weekend. At this point in time, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to end up doing something to this woman and end up never getting out of here. Yeah, I could have gave her what she wanted, but ugh. So I said, you know what? I got to go to the hole. So I went to my room. I packed all my stuff up and I went to the control booth. I knocked on the glass. The sergeant that was in there was like, what's going on? I said, I need to talk to you for a minute. He like, all right, what's going on? I said, I fear for my life. I feel like somebody in here trying to kill me. Who is trying to kill you? I said, I don't want to give no names, but I just, I just fear for my life and I need to get out of here. At this point in time, if you tell a guard that you fear for your life and they don't get you out of there and something happened to you, big lawsuit. So he like, all right, all right cool. So he said, go get your stuff. I already, w I already had my stuff ready. I went upstairs, grabbed my stuff, came in the office. Dudes look like, what the heck going on? He checking in? Why? D checking in? What the heck going on? The moral of this story is this. In prison, you only have so much control of what you can do and what you can't do. You only have so much control of your life and decisions that you make. DCOs, they can make your life a living hell up in there. They control your movement. They control what you eat. They control the temperature of the water in the shower that's getting put on your body. Sarah would go on to find her a new boy toy. And well, he was busting that thing wide open. Ugh, good. I'm free. I end up doing a month in a hole till they put me in a new block. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. This is the Dante Show. Lockdown 88, I'm out. Again, I appreciate what you did. She gave me a hug, like, boom. Now, let me tell y'all something. I ain't held a woman in almost a year. So, bing, bing, bing. When being locked up, you got three choices. You either gonna remain celibate, you gonna mess with the punks, or you gonna get some game about yourself and get with one of them female correction officers. These female COs, dirty, grimy. <laughs> This is how I almost got set up. I've been down for almost about a year now, give or take. We're going to call this CO, CO Tiffany. CO Tiffany, you could tell she was like from the streets. She was from the hood. You could tell by her mannerisms. You could tell the way that she walked, the way that she talked, the way that she interacted with the inmates. Now, like I told y'all in the beginning, it's three things that's going to happen to release that urge. Either you're going to mess with the punks or you're going to get that game and get one of these female COs. At this time, I'm laying on my bed. It's count time. At this time, Tiffany is doing count, her and another officer. When it's count time, you must be on your feet. You and your bunkie must be standing on your feet. So when they get to my cell, I'm laying in my bed, and my bunkie, he knocked out cold. Inmate, why you not standing for count? That's the male guard talking to me. And what's wrong with your bunkie? Why he not out of his bed? Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, Depp. So I roll up out the bed and I wake my bunkie up. I said, yo, we got to we gotta get up for count. He like, all right, man. So he rolled up out of the bed and we stand in there. And then they walk off. I get back in the bed, lay down. He get back in his bed and he lay down. I hear the cell doors pop, 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 pop. This is what you call first movement. So it's first movement. At this time, dudes going downstairs, jumping in the shower, about to go to school, about to go to work, chilling the pot, programmed the way they programming. I go to the door and our cell door is locked. I'm like, what the heck wrong with this door? I'm trying to get it open. It's not open. I'm like, yo, CO, CO, hey, could you pop this lock? Who was that? It's Dante, cell 24. Nah, y'all wasn't up for count. Y'all on lockdown for today, buddy. I'm like, what? Yeah, you knew y'all supposed to be out that bed. So y'all on lockdown for the rest of the day. Enjoy. I look at my bunkie. I was like, yo, you know we on lockdown, right? We, we ain't coming out this room today. He's like, what? I said, yeah, we on lockdown. He like, oh, no, man, I got to get on the phone with my girl, man. My girl, she about to have this baby any day now. No, uh-uh. Hey, he jump out the bed. He get up on the door. Hey, man, hey, open this door, man. I'm not playing with y'all. I'm not playing. Open this door, man. I got to get on the phone. I got to get on the phone. See, yo, like, inmate, you not getting out of there. Hey, no, man, stop playing games, man. Open up this door, man. I got to go. I got to get on the phone and talk to my girl. She about to have a baby today. Inmate, I'm not going to tell you again. You ain't going nowhere. You should have been up for count. You know the rules, inmate. I say, yo, bro, chill, chill, chill before they come up here and try to do us dirty. No, man, F that. F that, man. 
No, man. No, I, I need to get on that phone. I need to get on that phone now. I'm like, yo, chill, bro. Chill. Man, man, Dante, man, listen, man. My girl is high risk pregnancy. I got to get on that phone, man. I, 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 I can't be there physically for her, but I got to be there spiritually. So I got to be there for her. I said, listen, bro, I know that, but you know how they, you know how they get down up in here, man. He like, man, forget that. Man, open this door. Open this door. He yelling out there on the tear. Now he getting belligerent. Man, if y'all don't open up this door, I'm a blank, 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 all this and that. Making threats against the COs. Me? I already know what time it is. I know what they about to come do. So you know what I go do? Y'all know I got asthma. So what I went to go do, I got me a towel, put cold water on it, heavily, heavily cold water on it. And I sat there by the sink. Sure enough, here come a deputy. Inmate, didn't I say stop banging and making all that noise? Man, I, don't I ain't trying to hear none of that. Man, hey, I need to get on the phone and talk to my girl. Well, you sitting there with me I don't care. I don't care about that. I don't care, man. Let me out of here. Hey, man, you better calm down. I ain't calming down nothing. Matter of fact, when I when I get out of here, I'm going in your mouth. Bad mistake. What you do not do while locked up is threaten a CO. Get this understood, okay? This is day house. This is day house. The inmates don't run it. Maybe in them level fours and level fives, yeah, they might run. They might run it there, you know, with the connections on the outside and the mafia ties and the gang ties on the outside with the extortion game outside of the prison. Yeah, they might run it. But in the level two and level one yards, no, that's day house. What you gonna, even if you the best fighter in the world, like myself, you ain't beating three, four, you might knock out the first guard, the second guard, the third guard, but you ain't knocking out, you not knocking out four or five guards. You know, they, they, they just gonna keep coming. Don't let them call the turtle squad, the goon squad. What is the goon squad? These guys come in there with the all black on, with the black gloves, with the knuckle parts on it, with the knuckle gloves. Yeah. They come with the riot shields. They come with the face mask. They come with the steel knee pads on, the elbow pads on. Oh, they coming in there for one thing and one thing only to inflict as much pain and damage as they possibly can to your human body. Oh, okay. So you wanna, you gonna do what to me? Man, I, like I said, I don't care. When I get out here, I'm sleeping you. Bet. So here I go over there by the toilet getting ready. Deputy Tiffany. Walk up to the cell. Hey, you need to calm down. Man, I'm not calming down with nothing, man. I'm not calming down with nothing. All right, man, look, y'all better open up the cell door right now. Right now. I ain't got it. So, so Tiffany trying to calm him down. He ain't going for it. She get real close to the cell. She's like talking to him on the side. Like she's turned to the sideway like this talking to him. And he right here. Out of nowhere. He reached through the bar, grabbed her by her hair, wrap it up. Boom. String her up like this. At this point, she's screaming, help, help, let me go, let me go, try to hit them. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something about me. I know some of you felons out there, convicts out there. This is where the line is drawn. Some of us feel like still while locked up. You do not put your hand on the female. Some of us convicts feel like, man, they the enemy. They the ops. Do what you going to do. Do what you got to do to these female COs. They knew what they signed up for. They knew this was a dangerous job. So this is what comes with it. Me, I'm one of them inmates. I ain't going for it. I instantly run up on them. Grab them like that. Bam. Put all that on them right there. Y'all see all that? Y'all see all that? I put all that on him. Bam. Get it up under this neck. Squeeze a little bit. Pull back a little bit. He can't breathe. So at this point, I'm on him. Choking him out. He's still holding her, but I feel his body getting limp. But he's still holding on to her. So at this time, it's like five guards trying to get in the cell. But how he got her, the cell door can't open this way. Because how he got it in the movement between the bars. So now he going to sleep. He going to sleep. Bam. He sleep. <sighs> He sleep. And I laid him down. I jumped back towards the toilet. They rush in there. They beating him down. He already knocked out. Let me tell y'all something about these guards, man. This is why I say this is they house, man. They do any and everything to you and then write it up the blue wall of silence. Like what the cops do out there on the streets. They all have each other back. Well, they have each other back in there while locked up too. So then they're doing them dirty. The man already knocked unconscious. I already put him to sleep. Because I don't play that put your hands on women. They whip him out, hog tie him, carry him on out. One of the guards like, yo, Dante, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. The captain come in my room and he say, Dante, I appreciate what you did, man. I appreciate that. No doubt, no doubt, whatever. I said, yo, can I come out the room? He said, uh, 
nah, you can't. Rules are rules. I'm like, come on, man. I just say one. Now, I, I, I didn't have a crazy tone with him. Because this is the captain. This dude can instantly throw me in the hole. Tensions was running high up in there. So I wasn't about to get too crazy with him. And plus, everybody know me. I'm chill. It is what it is. The only time I'm not chill was somebody trying to blatantly disrespect me. And I might got to push that blade. Back in my younger days, I stayed with a bloody knife. Y'all already know what time it is. Hit that like button. Now let's get back to the story. So I'm like, come on. Come on, Cap. Let me let me come out the room, man. You know, I just saved deputy life. He like, yeah, but, you know, rules are rules. And, yeah. Well, I tell you what, I'll give you a couple extra trays for dinner. Cool? I said, all right, bet. True, I'm I'm good with that. He walk out my cell. I'll go back and lay down. Dude's coming up to the cell like, man, you real for that, man. Yeah, man, I, man, that's crazy. What was up with him? I'm like, nah, I don't really want to talk about it. Dude steady coming to the cell. Yo, D, man, what happened, man? Why, why you do old boy like that? I really didn't want to talk about it. I'm like, you know, he just got out of line. That's all. It ain't. It ain't nothing too much about it. About 20 minutes later, Tiffany and another CEO come to my cell with a cart. They come to pack him up. He out of there. He gone for assaulting the officer. He out of there. So they came in there. I'm pointing all this stuff out, pack all this stuff up, and get it out of there. Tiffany look at me. She like, I just want you to know that I appreciate what you did for me. You ain't have to do that. I appreciate that. Now, at this time when she's saying this, she's like this close to me. But she had a certain look in her eye. The male CEO that came in there with her, he was already out. He was halfway down in tears. She was still in there talking to me. She was like, how long you got? I got about nine more years. She was like, oh, mm. She said, you got, you got a woman on the outside? Uh, you know how that is. She was like, yeah, I know how that is. She was like, well... Again, I appreciate what you did. She gave me a hug, like, boom. Now, let me tell y'all something. I ain't held a woman in almost a year. So, bing, bing, bing. She hugged me like that. And so, she she looked down. She's like, oh, bing. And I, I was like, she backed up. And she was like, oh, yeah. Okay, you a bad boy, ain't you? Hey, man, it is what it is. I mean, what would y'all with it did? Stop playing games with me, man. I'm a heterosexual straight Man, what what did I supposed to do? I can't control what my body naturally supposed to do when I haven't touched a woman in almost a year. Stop playing games, y'all. I'm a human being. This is lockdown 88. Stop playing, man. She was like, oh, I see you a bad boy. So I was like, what you expect, man? So she was like, all right, all right. I see what it is. So she motioned for them to close the cell door. So I'm like, all right, bet, cool. She left, then she came back like 15 minutes later. Now, when she came back, she had like a chair. She, she had a chair and she was sitting talking to me. This is not unusual for a guard to do that. You never know what the guard could be doing. It wasn't out of the ordinary for the inmates to see a guard talking to an inmate the way that she was talking to me. They really couldn't hear what she was saying. You know, she telling me that she got a husband and he dogging her out. Every time she get her paycheck, she got to give it to him, putting his hands on her, how she don't deal with her family. You know, I'm sitting there listening to, I ain't had no female contact in a long time, so I'm here for it. I, I got that ear to listen. Whatever you want to talk about, let's talk about it. And shout out to my ex, you know, the one that was cheating on me while I was locked down. You thought your boy was gone for 10 years, but now look at me now. Uh-huh. Yeah. My wife looked better than you. She smelled better than you. She talked better than you. She even seemed better than you. So yeah, we talk and we hold a conversation. She was like, you know I'm working third shift tomorrow. I'm like, a word? She was like, yeah. She was like, I'm going to need for you to help me get some cleaning supplies tonight before I clock out. So I said, okay, bet. So she got up and she said, I got to make these rounds. And she got to go take a lunch break. So she left. So I'm sitting there on the bed and my cell door popped like 10 minutes later. I got a new celly. It's this young Mexican cat. And the politics and where I was at, blacks and Mexicans can jail together. Our politics wasn't like the West Coast. We didn't push them type of West Coast politics. So he get up in there, we talking. Yeah, homeboy, I heard what you did to your celly. That was some real honorable for, for Tiffany, man. He was like, yeah, man. Hey, I don't like women abuse neither. This is why I'm in here, man. My stepfather, he kept beating the hell out of my moms and I blew his the head off, Holmes. I said, okay. So I'm in here with a life. I'm here with, I'm here with a killer. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking in my head. So I'm going to have to watch him. He like, yeah, boy, we respect Holmes. Respect Holmes. He like, hey, um, I seen Tiffany 
you know, talking to you. What what was you guys talking about? I was like, nothing really. She was just telling me how much she appreciated what I did for her. Nothing much. He like, that's it? She was up here for about 15 minutes talking to you, Holmes. I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he like, nah, nah, y'all had to be talking about more than that, Holmes. Listen, Holmes, I want to tell you something, but, you know, it's a lot of haters around here. And I, I don't know if you, I don't know you like that, but at the same time, you seem mad cool, but uh, let, just tell me, I want to tell you something so bad, Holmes, but I got to make sure we on the same page, you know what I mean? I'm like, well, you tell me what you got first. So he like, all right, listen, Holmes, okay, you know, Tiffany, yo, she's, she, you can... She she's a prostitute, man. She 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 sell her body to to certain inmates. If you got that cholo, yeah, she, she, yeah. I'm saying, huh? What you mean by that? He like, yeah, man. Yeah, the homies on the other yard over there. They give her money on the outside, and she gives it up. I said, word. He like, yeah. But check this out. Don't do it. Don't do it because she's burning. I said, what you mean she's burning? Man, hey, listen, you you put your, you know what in there, it's going to come out on fire. And you know how these prison doctors is here, Holmes. Shout out to my Mexican brothers, all right? Shout out to the Latino brothers. I don't know if I got a bad accent for the Mexicans or the Latinos, but it's all I love, y'all. Y'all know I love, y'all. You know, I'm like... Man, come on. I said, how you know that? Like, you know that for a fact? Like, she burning? He said, come on, Holmes. She's a dirty bitch, man. But, hey, I can't tell you what to do, man. I'm just letting you know. I'm just giving you the heads up, you know, that she's burning. At this point, I'm thinking in my head, like, this dude hating. If guys see you getting female attention from a guard, dudes, it's treacherous. They'll drop a kite talking about y'all. They seen y'all doing things that y'all didn't do. Saying that y'all been acting inappropriate, try to get her up out the pot. So when you do things like I'm attempting to do or we attempting to do, no, you got to keep that on the low. I just met this guy, so I don't know this dude from a can of paint. I don't trust this dude as far as I can throw. I'm going to just be cautious and get me some saran wrap if it goes down. I was like, all right, then, word, word. He leads back out. Now I'm laying down on the bed. She comes back and she got a paper towel with two strawberry shortcakes in there and so she gave it to me and she winked at me and i said oh i bet bet okay she looking out for me this ain't hey this ain't bad you know every day while locked up is hell however today it kind of made me feel like i was back on the streets man especially with this strawberry pie so i lay back down i smash it immediately lean over and go grab me a mountain dew and drink the mountain dew down so i'm laying down i'm like okay you know, prison ain't that bad. We're going to fast forward. So she comes to my cell. Pop cell, blah, blah, blah. So I come out. She said, hey, I need for you to help me get these cleaning supplies. I'm following her with the keys, bent over a little bit. And, you know, I bumped into her. I said, man, you better stop playing. But let me tell you, <laughs> we get into the utility room. And she, like, pushed me against the wall. Now, at this time, y'all, I'm all cut up. Got my boy head on. LL Cool J. I'm licking my lips. Like, so she pressed up against me. You know, she pushed me against the wall. She pressed up on me. I don't like kissing. Well, I kiss now with my wife, but I do not like kissing. And especially then. And especially this is a, a strange woman. So when she leaned in for a kiss, I, like, kind of turned this way. And she got to kiss me on the neck. So I'm like... Okay, so then she kept, she keep trying to kiss me like on the lips and the mouth, but I'm keep doing like this. She was like, what, what's wrong? I said, man, I'm kind of nervous. Now, I wasn't nervous down there, but up here, I wasn't going for it. I don't know how many men you done kissed in the last month, in the last week, in the last day, in the last hour. I'm not no fool. Shoot, I, listen, tell y'all something. I came in prison STD free. I'm leaving prison STD free. It is what it is. Now hit that like button. When it comes down to it, now she's like, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. See, I'm buckling. I'm unbuckling. At this point now, anxiety done set in. I'm like, what if somebody walk up in here on me? What if another guard walk in on us? She might holler, oh, he, me, he, me, he try to, me. All this stuff is going through my head at this point. Now, that down there, it's like, Dante, don't do it. 
Don't do it. Oh, oh, she might try to set you up. She might try to set you up. I'm like, shut up down there. I'm about to get this. I ain't touched a woman the whole year. Then another thing came to my head and said, Dante, she burning. Don't do it. When I start thinking about that, I'm thinking like, dang, you know what? One minute of pleasure. Hey, 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 I told y'all I ain't been with a woman for a whole year. Y'all stop playing games like you men out there that ain't had none in months and months. It's going to go in like a full-blown train and blow it out. Cut that out, man. We blowing that motor in probably one, two minutes at best. Now I'm thinking like, dang, if I do this, it's going to be a long time that I'm going to get some medical attention. It's going on my medical record. And then if somebody try to look me up, and say, oh, he had this while he was locked up. They were like, hold up. It's only me in there. How you get, oh, snap. No, I see y'all ain't about to put that jacket on me. So I'm thinking about all this stuff. At this point in time, I'm like, I said, listen, could you just, I said, could you just, could you just go down? And she was like, she looked at me. She was like, I guess. Now we going to fast forward all of that. We going to fast forward all of that now. I do what I do. She do what she do. I get up out of there. I'm carrying a mop bucket and I'm carrying some garbage bags. Now I'm kind of light in a, I'm, I got noodle legs at this point. I ain't going to lie. I leave out first and then she come out like 30 seconds later. And then I go to my cell. I lay down. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. So I lay down and my bucket like, yeah, fool, you did it, huh, fool? I said, man, what you talking about? Because I still don't know this cat. I still don't trust this dude. This dude probably wait for some information to blow up my whole spot. Or then again, you know, this is prison. And, you know, he want to hear that interaction, what just happened. So I'm like, nah, man, you a fool, man. I just went in there and just got here. Like, y'all was in there for a long time, fool. I said, man, chill out. I slept like a baby oh, for maybe 10 minutes till I realized, dude, you in prison. This dude down there probably got a blade re ready to push it on you. So I'm like, oh. Can't really go to sleep because I'm in prison, man. I don't know what this dude might try to do to me while I'm asleep. Count time. My son is like, yo, wake up, wake up, wake up. So I get up, wipe sleep out my eye. It's Tiffany and another guard. They walk past. She's smiling at me. She's she just looking at me extra hard. And my celly, he sees this too. He like, oh, huh. So then he's like, yeah, fool. I know y'all did it. How was it? How was it to cast out the bag, Holmes? I see how she was looking at you, Holmes. I'm like, man, we ain't dinner. He said, come on, man. Tell me what happened. What happened? So I'm going to tell y'all. This how I went down. In prison, I told y'all, dudes in prison gossip like women. And I'm sorry. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty. I was in there gossiping like a woman. I gave him details. All the details. So he he's sitting down there on his bunk with a Big smile on his face, like from here to here, right? So I'm telling him, like, yeah, man, she did this, she did that, man. I never had that happen to me before. So he like, yeah, fool. But did you did you did you go in raw horns? He's like, he said, did, did you go in raw horns? I said, no, I didn't. I ain't hit it. I, that's, that's the only thing I did. He like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I bet. So when I told him this, he like, hey, Hobbs, hey, um, I. Since we're going to be in here together for a while, I'm going to go ahead and let you know some things. Like, I'm going to let you know the real. Like, you remember I told you that she be prostituting around here? I said, yeah. He was like, well, it's not no mistake that I'm over here. I work with her. And, you know, I set all that up. I got a sale for homes. And this how we conduct the bit. So he giving me the whole layout. Inmates that he can trust, even though you're supposed to trust nobody. Hey, but if you got a good thing going on, you don't want to mess that up. He's selective with what guys he put on to this. So he pull out a cell phone and he like, yeah, so this how the operation go. They get in contact with my people on the outside and they and they people send money to my cash app and send money to my wife. And then, you know, it's 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 $2,000 to hit that. Yeah, that's what I do here, man. That's, you know, I, I got moved in this cell for a specific reason, for that reason, so I can be over here. I said, okay, cool, bet, bet. So he was like, yeah, if, if you ever want that again, you know, let me know. I always tell y'all, good things doesn't last in prison at all. At all. Prison is like hell. Whatever it is in love, why do I feel this way? Why do she stay on my mind? You better get that song out your head right now, boy, because your head is about to get cracked to the white meat. 
as the days progress, she's coming to the cell, smiling, holding more conversations with me while we out there in the pod. I'm up there at the control booth talking to her. It's all good. Now, I've noticed my Sally, he's getting a little agitated. At, like, every time I'm talking to her, coming over there interrupting and, like, just saying little things. So this went on for about four days. So I'm like, man, what's up with dude? Like, why are you acting like that? So I said, all right, whatever, whatever. It is what it is. <coughs> I'm going to say on the fifth day of him acting kind of funny, because we're not even talking that much in the cell no more. He making his plays on the cell phone and this and that. And every once in a while, I ask him to use the phone so I can call my people. And he'll let me use it. I just said something different about it. his whole energy. He was all chipper and everything and just, you know, real cool to be around. But now it seems like he got a problem. So I rolled over. I said, hey, you all right? He said, yeah, yeah, man, I'm cool. I'm just going through something. I'm like, what, what's up with you? He like, no, nah, no, nah, don't, don't worry about it. It's cool, man. It's cool. Hey, hey, let me ask you something. Have you with Tiffany been fucking? I said, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. I, I just want to know. Have y'all? I said, no, I mean, we did what we did that one time. He said, oh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, do, do, do you, you got you got money on the outside? Like, you, you got some people that, you know. I said, hold on. What you trying to say? He like, no, 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 no. I'm saying, you know, if, if you want to hit that again, you know, you, you got to go the proper way. You got to go through the proper channel. You cut me out. I said, huh? I said, hold up. Now, I'm thinking to myself, like, dude, I ain't got to pay for nothing. She digging me. I ain't got to pay for nothing. I said, no, nah, man, we nah, ain't even like that, man. We we straight. We cool, man. I don't even look at it like that. What we did is what we did. He like, oh, okay, okay. I'm just, I just don't want nobody playing with my money, man. I'm in here doing life, and I ain't never getting out. And, you know, I just feel like you could be potentially messing up my money. I'm like, nah, man, it ain't even like that. I said, but yeah, good looking now. Yeah. He got an issue with me. He got a problem. He and his feelings. Now, I told y'all, I can't tell another man how to program. But another man is not going to tell me how to program neither. The next morning, we get up for count. Tiffany isn't there. I'm like, huh, why Tiffany ain't here? Hmm, maybe she called off sick or something today. I don't know. Business as usual that day. The next day, Tiffany not there. The next day, Tiffany not there. The next day, Tiffany is not there. Oh, I'm like, man, what happened to her? Did she like on vacation? I mean, I know she don't owe me nothing. She finally come in. I shoot up to the control booth and I'm like, yo, what's up with you? And she looking like kind of scared a little bit, like, like weary. And she hit the door and I came in. I said, what's up with you? She was like, you going around telling people we, we messing around? I'm like, no, why you say that? She was like, Come on, Dante, you cannot do that. I'll lose my job and you'll get in trouble and I'm saving my own ass. Well, have Julio been telling you? I was like, shoot, nothing really. She was like, come on, Dante, tell me the truth. What have you been telling you? He told me about y'all little arrangement that y'all got going on. Why, what's up? She was like, well, I wasn't completely honest with you. That's my boyfriend. I said, it is? She was like, yeah. And yeah, the operation is true, but he's starting to feel like, like, man, you messing around and you messing with his money. Then, you know, he talking about he going to do something to my family on the outside if I keep messing around with you. Then he talking about pushing that blade on you. I said, huh? She was like, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what to do. I said, when he talking about doing this? She was like, I don't know, but um, just watch your back. I said, well, get this up out of here then. Get him up out of this. He was like, no, because if I, he, he said he's going to tell you. He got videos of me um, messing around with other guys and stuff like that here. No, I, I'll be in a lot of trouble, so I really can't say nothing, do nothing. And I really like you, so, you know, you need to, uh, can, can you take care of that for me? I said, what you mean take care of that? She like, you know, could you push that blade on him? I was like. Nah, you, huh? She was like, "Yeah, that's the only way. That's the only way this thing will work." You know, I I write it up as you know he was the aggressor and this and that, blah 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 blah. So I'm sitting here thinking like, "Hold up." So I'm sitting. I don't hold on. What you want me to do? What? She was like, "Yeah, won't you go ahead and poke him up so we can get him out of here?" And I write it up in your favor. So I'm thinking like. And I said, you sure he, he talking about making a move on me? She was like, yeah. 
So I'm like, all right, man. All right, all right, let me think about it. Let me think about it. She was like, okay, man, but, you know, you need to do something. So I said, all right. So then I leave out. I feel like everybody in the pod looking at me and as I leave out the control booth. And so I'm like, this. So then I go up to my cell. And he in there. He in there making wax figures. That's, that was a thing that he do. He would make wax figures like chest pieces out of wax and stuff and tissue. So I go in there and I close the cell door behind me. He doesn't even look up. And I'm standing at the cell door thinking like, should I just rush this dude now? Is he going to try to get me while I sleep? Is he going to try to take me out with my back turned? So I walk in there. I said, hey, hey, I want you to set something up with um Tiffany with me later on in the week. And he look up, he like, oh, oh, no, nah, no, nah, man, that's dead. That's over with. That's dead. Well, now nah, we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. I said, oh, word, why not? He like, look, 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 listen, Holmes, don't get out of my business. Get out of my business, Holmes. So at this point, I'm like, yeah, he and his feelings. He got to go. Not tomorrow, not next week. He got to go. So I said, all right, man, whatever. So then I leave out the cell. One of my homeboys come up to me like, yo, you all right? Because, you know, I wear my feelings all on my face. I can't I can't hide it at all. So I'm standing there. My homeboy come up to me. He like, yo, you all right? You straight? I said, yeah, I'm straight. He was like, man, come on, dude. You ain't straight. What, what What's up? What's going on? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just thinking about something. He's like, what? I think I might have to push that blade on my celly. He like, for real? For what? What's going on? Let's go on and let's talk. So I'm talking to my homeboy, and I knew him from the streets. I'm like, so I'm telling him the situation. I'm like, yeah, so, you know, me and Tiffany. What, dude, you and Tiffany? What, y'all, what? I I got out with her, too. I said, you did? He's like, yeah. I said, I said, you know, you out cold. Why you ain't tell me? I thought you knew. Everybody knew. I'm always late to the party, right? You know, we walking and talking. I said, yeah, man. 1-800-GOSSIP. So I'm like, yeah, man, um, you know, he's really her boyfriend and he mad that, you know, me and her did what we did and he didn't get paid for it. So now he in his feelings, he thinking me and her is getting down like every night. And I said, we only messed around one time. And he was like, so what you want to do? I said, well, I don't really want to mess the play up for everybody because, it, you know, we go in there and do something bad to him. You know, that might cause problems for us around here. Because other dudes got plays lined up with old girl. And he was like, well, I tell you what, bro. How about we take it over? You know, talk to Tiffany and, you know, see, can you take that over? I said, on the real, though, he a lifer, man. We going to have to take him out. Like, take his life. Get him. He got to get airlifted out of here in a body bag. That's the only way we going to pull this play out. He like, man. All right, whatever, man. Well, I mean, you know, just let let me know when you're ready. Just let me know how you want to do it. I said, all right, all right, I'll let you know. So I go back to the room, and he's standing there. He's like, yeah, I seen you talking to home, but what was y'all talking about? I said, ain't none of your money. He like, what? What you 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 got something to say to me, Holmes? I said, yeah, I got something to say to you. You got an issue with me? He like, if you got an issue with me, Holmes, we can do it. The CEO that's downstairs come up there like, what y'all got going on up here? Y'all cut that out. I said, all right, all right. So then I walk off. So now I'm thinking to myself like, yeah, it's on. So my homeboy come up to me instantly like, yo, what, what, what was that all about? What, what, what's up? What we, we about to do it now or what? I said, no, nah, we finna this. I'm going I'm to sleep. I'm going to sleep on I'm going to ride it out. So I end up back in the cell. I'm at the top bunk. I got the bank. I got the, you know, I keep that thing that stay bloody. Yeah, I keep that. I got that out right there on my side. So he down there. He like, hey, Holmes. Hey, I apologize early. You know, I'm just going through a whole lot right now. And, you know, I ain't mean to take that out on you. I said, no, you, you straight. You good. All alone. I'm gripped up. I'm gripped up waiting for him to try to spring into action. Hey, man, you know, Tiffany, you know, that been my girl. She been holding me down for a long time, man, and I love her. In my head, I'm like, this dude's sick. I mean, yeah, I can't tell nobody how to program at the same time. You in love with a prostitute? Like, I mean, I guess, hey, it is what it is. You you locked up. You ain't never getting out. This is the closest thing to a woman, even though she's doing what she's doing with multiple men up here. It is what it is. I doze off. Big mistake. I feel boom, boom, boom. Y'all want to know what he hit me with? He put two bars of soap in the sock. Bam.
bam, bam, bam. I'm asleep. Boom, boom. I'm like, oh. So I rolls this way, trying to duck it. I don't know what I'm getting hit with. Bam, bam, boom. So he using that thing like a, like a slingshot. Man, I jumped up off that bed. David versus Goliath. But this time, Goliath did not go down. Now, keep in mind, at this point, I'm 5'11", about 240, all muscle. He like 5'7", maybe 130, 135 ish. So I jump down there. He go for it again. He wind up again and try to hit me again. I'm weaving and bam, bam. So I'm in there. Boom, boom. Got him against the ropes. Boom, 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 boom. Getting it all. Bam, bam. You know, he got long hair. So I grab him by his hair. Uppercut, uppercut, boom, boom. Maxing him out. Bam. Cuff up, cuff up, cuff up. At this point, he knocked out, out cold. He laid out in a pool of blood. Bam. Beat me. With two bars of soap in the sock. What did I supposed to do? Lay there and get lumped up? Matter of fact, I was lumped up. I had a lump right here. The guard said, hey, mate, bag up, bag up. Because they about to come in there. Dudes all up on the on the cell bars yelling like, yo, what's going on down there? What's going on down there? Dudes hollering. Dudes screaming. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I bag up because I'm not trying to get maced. So I bag up. Put my hands behind my back and get on my knees. They come in there, put the elbow, the kneecaps to my back, all that. Grab me up out of there, throw me in a hole. They take him out, take him to medical. Sergeant come back there, talk to me. I got a ticket for assault. I plead guilty. I get a month in a hole. Me being back there in a hole, I didn't hear nothing about Tiffany. She did not come back there and visit me. What if it is in love? Why do I feel this way? Why do she stay on my mind? Happy Thanksgiving, y'all, too. Hit that like button. So I'm back there, and I'm just thinking, like, man, what the heck going on? Like, I wonder if dude blew up the spot. So then word get back to me, like, hey, Julio said when, he, when you get out, I'm like, it is what it is. It is what it is. He can't beat me fist to fist, man to man. I end up released. Two Mexicans approach me while I'm sitting in my cell. They like, hey, hold on, you Dante? I said, no, I don't know who that is. They like, are you sure you're not Dante? I said, yeah, I mean, what's up? They like, oh, okay, okay. Then they walked off, and I came out to cell. I said, yo, if I was Dante, what would y'all would have did? They was like, are you Dante? I said, yeah, what's up? It is. So they said, oh, 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 no, 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 no. No, no, there, there's no problems. Julio said the beef is dead. The beef is dead. So I'm like, yeah, all right, I need to get a hold of some steel real fast because these dudes about to come at me. I already know it. So I'm standing there. You know, I'm just checking the pod out, seeing who is who and what is what. Here comes Tiffany. She walks past me and she say, hey, I need to talk to you. When everybody go out for Rick, you stay back. So I'm like, okay. Rec time come. Conversation started. She like, hey. Um, she like, hey, I'm pregnant. I said, okay. She was like, yeah, the baby yours. I said, what you mean a baby mine? We ain't never did nothing. She was like, yes, we did. We never had intercourse like that, that way. Well, I'm pregnant and it's your baby. I'm like, yo, chill out. That's, that is not my kid. We ain't never did nothing that way. So she was like, so you just going to really do me like that? I'm going to tell y'all how whacked out this girl is. She done messed with so many men in there. Me and her never, ever had intercourse in that way. Ever. Never. It never happened. She went down on me one time. That's it. She got it in her head that she just 100% convinced that this is my baby. And I'm like, hey, you tripping. She was like, well, listen, I know you locked up, but I need some money. I need some money to get rid of this baby. I'm like, man, you better talk to your boyfriend. She was like, he ended up stabbing the CEO. They they transferred him. He's gone. And you need to watch your back because he got a hit out on you. Two Mexicans that approached me earlier. Yeah, they was going to try to do me dirty. But, hey, it is what it is. This prison. It comes with the territory, right? So I'm like, I'm like, I said, listen, I don't got, I didn't, yo, you better holler at whoever you need to holler at, because that ain't my baby. She was like, well, I'm just going to let you know right now, there's your baby, and your people on the outside need to give me $2,500. I said, man, I ain't about to, do. I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. So she was like, oh, for real? For real? I said, yeah, for real. For the next three days, she keep coming at me with this BS. 
oh, this your baby, this, that, whoop de woo whoop de woo And I told y'all how inmates gossip all the time. Some of these inmates get word of what she's saying. It was spread like wildfire. About a week later, Dante, roll it up. I'm like, oh, I'm getting transferred again? Two COs come in my cell with the cart. They said, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about it. We got you. I'm like, what's going on? I'm going back to the hole? Yeah, you going back to the hole. For what? Let's go. Cuff up. Here I go back to the hole. Captain come talk to him. He like, yeah, so we got word that you had sex with Deputy Tiffany and she's pregnant. I'm like, I don't know why she would say that. Me and her never, ever messed around. So he like, well, that's an institution charge for you. That's another charge for you. You know, we go through our proceedings and all this and that. The investigators come in and this and that. It basically came down to this. When she had a baby, a DNA test would be taken. If the baby turns out to be mine, which it wasn't, because we never did that, then I was going to get additional time added to my already 10-year sentence, okay? She ended up letting them know that it was old dude, baby. He was already shipped off. They ended up firing her. She didn't get no jail time or nothing like that. I ended up getting put into another pot, always on the edge. Who going to try to come at me because this clown done put a hit out on me? Because he couldn't control his woman. Because his woman wanted to break me off. Days ago by, weeks ago by, I started getting letters from her. Oh, we gonna be together when you get out. Oh, I'm sorry for putting you through that. You were just so understanding. You saved my life, this and that, this and that. When I first got them letters, I thought I was getting set up. Like maybe she ain't writing these letters. Maybe a investigator is writing these letters for me to corroborate her story. And then I get thrown back in a hole in additional time, right? So I never wrote back. This would go on for about three months. Then the letters stopped coming. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm out. Inmate Sweet Low, do you take inmate Jerome as your unlawful wedded husband? I do. And inmate Jerome, do you take inmate Sweet Low as your unlawful husband? I do. By the power that's invested in me by Satan himself, I pronounce you two guys a um, man and man and inmate on inmate. You may kiss the bra. This was a match made in the bottomless pits of hell. This is when inmate Sweet Low got married on the yard. In prison, you see all types of things. You see a lot of crazy things on the yard. You see things that will stick to you for the rest of your life. You see things that will give you nightmares. This story right here in particular is called The Wedding on the Yard. It was sanctioned by Lucifer himself, a.k.a. the devil. This story is about M.A. Sweet Low and how him and Jerome tied the knot on the yard. Today was an unusual day. So I'm laying on my bed reading my Bible. My Sally come in like, yo, Dante, man, did you hear You hear what's going on? I'm like, what's going on? He said, man, you won't believe this, but all the punks is getting together. They 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 wearing all white. Like, they going around getting sheets. The seamstress put together, like, wedding, like, clothes. I said, what? what you mean, wedding clothes? So I said, oh, okay, whatever. You know, I guess... That's what they do. Whatever. I, I mean, it ain't none of my business. I see a couple of punks running down the tier. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I peek my head out and I look down the tier and I see a whole bunch of punks gathered together wearing white. And they all like extra happy. So I'm like, hold on. What the heck going on? Inmate Sweet Low. I told y'all about him already. He decides that he want to tie the knot with one of his boys by the name of Jerome. Match made in the bottomless pits of hell. I look down there, dip back in my cell. And I'm like, you know what? As long as nobody getting hurt, as long as ain't nobody getting poked up or beat up, let them do what they do. Let them have their fun. Let them have it. Who am I to tell another man how to program? It ain't me. So I get back in my bed and my homeboy, Devante, come to me. He like, hey, man, you hear what's going on? I said, yeah, I, I heard what's going on. He said, man, that's 
that's crazy. I said, hey, it is what it is, man. He said, so you know, M.A. Sweet Low and Jerome get married on the yard at four o'clock. I said, I guess so. So he said, you do know that they want you to preside over the wedding. Come again? He said, yeah. M.A. Sweet Low, do you take M.A. Jerome as your unlawful wedded husband? Word is that you presiding over they wedding. Now, let me give y'all a little backstory of me. When I got locked up, I wasn't affiliated with no gangs. So I did not run with the Crips. I did not run with the Bloods. I did not run with the Muslims. I'm a Christian man. Me being a Christian man, I have to push that blade many times. When you get locked up, if you don't join an organization, you are instantly prey. When the wolves approach you and say, yo, who you with? Where you from? And you not with nobody? And you not with no organization? That's a green light on you. We can extort you and nobody will have your back. We can beat you up. There will be no consequences. We can rob you. And there will be no consequences. However, you got a certain few individuals like myself that when that line is pressed and you come up my cell and you try to cause bodily harm to me, well, it's going to get met with immediate violence. You walk in my cell Talking about is you going to get down and lay down? Come on in. But know this. I'm gripped up at all times. And I will push that blade immediately. You come in my cell and trying to extort me or take anything from me? Just know it's going to be immediate knife play. And cats around there knew that. So I done did my dirt. I done did what I had to do to let people know that Dante wasn't going for it. So let's get back to the story. Don't y'all ever get it twisted. So now they like, yeah, the imam ain't going to do it. They didn't They didn't even approach the imam with it. Sweet Low was so serious about getting married on the yard that they actually, he actually cut up his jumpsuit to make it look like a suit. The gay guys, the punk, they had the whole nine like it was a real wedding. They ended up making cook-ups for the reception. The punks went to the seamstress to make them wedding dresses and gowns. This was a marriage from hell. So I'm like, who said I'm going to do that? Are you crazy? I'm not about to. Are you out your mind? He said, yo, that's the word. That's the word was going around the compound that you're supposed to be marrying them. I said, all right, whatever. Let me tell y'all something. I am not a homophobic man. I cannot tell another man how to program. If a man is attracted to another man and he want to get married to another man while locked up, that's his business. That got nothing to do with me. Ten minutes later, a punk come by my cell. Hey, um, Dante, can I talk to you right quick? I said, what's up? He like, um... Sweet Lope want to talk to you. And he want to know what you, I said, nope, nope, I'm not doing it. You don't even know what, nope, 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 nope. I already heard, oh, come on. I, I said, no disrespect, but nah, it, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. That's dead. So he walks off. Then two mo punks come to my cell. They like, Listen, you ain't got to do it for free. We going to pay you. Sweet Low going to give you three big bags of commissary. At this time, y'all, I'm like, I'm not about to be the laughing stock on this compound. But then I thought about it. I said, you know what? Why not? This is a joke to me. This is very funny to me. So why not? Sweet Low, come to my cell. I say, listen, this how we going to do this. I'll do it, but I need that. I need them bags right now, immediately. So he like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I got you, I got you. Hold on, I'll be right back. Him and two punks emerge 10 minutes later. I got a big bag of soups. I got a big bag of honey buns. I got 20 Mountain Dews. He said, yo, could you be on the yard at 345? Because we're going to do this at 4 o'clock. I said, all right, it's 345. We on the yard. My homeboy like, D, I know you plan. You really going to do that? I said, I already accepted the payment. Why not? On the yard at this point in time, it's like a chill day. The atmosphere on the yard is crazy at this point. Not in a violent way, but like, is this really going to take place? Cats walking up to me like, dude, you a fool. When they say you a fool, it was saying like, dude, you funny as hell. I'm sitting there on a, I'm sitting there on the basketball court and dudes coming up to me like, man, so, so, Word is that I orchestrated all of this, that I orchestrated the whole wedding, that I gave the punks the idea 
to get wedding gowns. And, like, I'm in charge of this whole fiasco. So people coming up to me like, dude, you funny as hell, man. You When you get out, you should be a comedian. Hint, hint. When you get out, man, you should have your own TV show. Hint, hint. The Dante Show, y'all. Hit that like button. I'm laughing. Me and dudes joking. And then, well, Sweet Low come out there. He said, all right, you ready? All right, I'm ready. At this time, there's some guys just playing for money on the court. Sweet Low, like, yo, 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 we got this. We holding this down. The guys don't want to get off the court. So Sweet Low like, hey, listen, I already told everybody what's up, man. I need this court. This one dude that they call Al, Big Al, was like, man, I don't give a fuck about that gay shit, nigga. Fuck wrong with you, nigga. Get the fuck out of here with that. Sweet Low like, hey, man, I said I need this fucking court, man. He like, Big Al like, man, get out of here with that bullshit before I crack your shit. So Sweet Low like, all right. All right, say less, say less. Oh, y'all thought everybody was down with this. Everybody was cool with this. This shit popping off on the yard. That's what y'all thought. Oh, y'all thought that it was going to be an actual wedding on the yard. There's never a happy ending in prison. Y'all thought I was going to tell y'all that M.A. Sweet Low was standing up there to the left and Jerome was standing over here to the right. M.A. Sweet Low, do you take M.A. Jerome as your unlawful Wedded husband. I do. And inmate Jerome, do you take inmate Sweet Low as your unlawful husband? I do. By the power that's invested in me by Satan himself, I pronounce you two guys. Do y'all want to exchange vows? That's what y'all thought was going to happen. Nah, that it didn't happen that way. I need this court. I said I need this court. Get off the court. Big Al like, get out of here with that Fruity Pebble bullshit. Sweet Low like, what? Big Al like, I said get off the, bam! Sweet Low hit him with that, bam! Big Al kind of stumbled like, do, do, do. One of Big Al homeboys that he playing basketball, run up on Sweet Low. Boom! Dropped him. The punks ran over there. Some of them punks had that blade, right? You got a full-blown heterosexual versus homosexuals brawl out there on the yard. Right there on the court. Boom, boom, boom. I'm talking about blade pushing. Bam! Ah! People screaming. People hollering. The punk. Hey, let me tell y'all something about the punks, too. Remember, these are still men that are beat yo. So they out there getting it. It's about, it's Sweet Low. It's about eight punks. Four Sweet Low homeboys versus six dudes that was with Big Al. So they out there rumbling. Boom, boom, boom. The guards letting it go down. I'm talking about day in there, getting it. Bow, bow. Me? I'm, I'm, I, hey, I fade to black. I'm not involved with this. I'm not, oh, oh, this ain't my fight. What that look like? Dante out, and let me tell y'all something. Dante being caught up on some BS like this. I'm not, oh, Dante was out there helping the punks. No, Dante, Dante faded to black like that. Oh, yeah, I disappeared, baby. I got out. Got up out of there. The guards let it go down for at least about two minutes. Lock down, lock down. Everybody get down, get down. You know me, I hit the deck. So they putting everybody down. They zip tying the punks. They zip tie Sweet Low. They zip tie Big Al and his homeboys. And off the yard, everybody go. So right now, everybody kind of hype because they like, yo, that was crazy. So we get back to the pot. And everybody like, man, yo, Dante, you a fool, man. You, 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 you almost caused the riot, right? I'm like, hey, I ain't have nothing to do with that. Sweet Low came over there talk about, can I preside over the way and, and this and that. And I'm like, I guess so. Okay. It was funny to me at, it, it was funny to me at the time. So I'm like, why not? Shoot. Three bags of commissary. Oh, so at this particular time, Sweet Low back there in the hole. Jerome, I don't know where he at. Everybody that was fighting on the yard, they went somewhere. About two hours later, the captain come in there and he grabbed me. He like, yo, come on down to the ward and want to talk to you. I'm like, for what? He said, let's go. I don't know what it's about. Let's go. As I'm walking out, I see two COs with a cart. So I'm like, am I going to the hole? He like, man, just come on. Let's go. Let me know if I'm going to the hole so I can pack some stuff up. He like, do, do you want me to come on, cuff up? Put your hands behind your back. I said, come on, I just put your hands behind your back, inmate. All right. So he cuffed me up, and there we go walking. So I get to the warden's office. 
And he coming in, he like, Dante, you don't give me no trouble. What is you doing trying to cause a riot on the yard? What, like, what What was that all about? Is, is this true that you was behind this wedding on the yard? Like, what? What's, what's going on with you? I said, listen, I don't got, no, I don't know why people keep saying, I don't know. I don't know. That ain't got nothing to do with, listen, I was on the yard flabbergasted just like everybody else. When I seen that, when I seen that unfold, I'm like, what the heck is going on? I said, I didn't know nothing about that till it popped off. When I seen them come out there wearing white and all that, shoot, I was like, yo, this is wild. So the warden like, are you sure you ain't got nothing to do with this? I'm like, I don't know who you getting this information from, but I ain't got nothing to do with this at all. He like, well, till we get this sorted out, you going to the hole. I said, for what? He said, because your name keep getting brought up. I said, listen, I don't got nothing to do with this. I, I, he said, Dante, I hear what you're saying, but we got to do a full investigation and your name is keep getting brought up that you was behind this whole masquerade. I said, all right. So then I kind of figured when I seen them two COs earlier with that cart that I was going to the hole. They was packing me up. So I ended up going to the hole for three days. Word came back to me. Big Al wanted to see me. Big Al and me got problems now because he felt like I was behind the whole thing. He's telling everybody that I snuck him on the yard. I'm like, what? They said, yeah, Big Al said that he want to see you. When you get from back here, Big Al want to holler at you. I said, man, I didn't even, what is he talking about? He's like, yeah, Big Al said that you socked him. You socked on him. When the fight happened, you, you got out on him. I said, you know what? All right, whatever. Now I'm getting mad. Now I'm getting mad. I'm like, all right, then fuck it then. It's like, whatever. I'm going to give y'all the story about Big Al later. I'm going to make a video about when me and Big Al got into it. If you ain't joined my page, make sure you join, okay? Make sure y'all hit that like button. I'm out. I hope and pray that this video reaches the ear that it need to reach. Please share this video. Here's the story of Raheem. Raheem was 14 years old. He got caught up with a gang. Raheem came from a good home. He had a mother that worked every day. He had a father that worked every day. Raheem had a baby sister that was two years old. Raheem came from a good home. His mother and father provided clothes on his back and food for his tummy. He always had the latest gear. Raheem never wanted for nothing, but Raheem was addicted to the bad guys. Raheem was addicted to the bad boys. Raheem loved to put himself in situations that he had no business putting himself in. Case in point, there was a group of kids at his school that were from the projects. These teenagers was heavy in the streets. They was doing things that grown men was doing. They carried pistols. They carried guns that had switches on them. They was laying bodies down. They called themselves demons. When they seen they op, they enemy, they opposition, they didn't hesitate. They killed without no mercy. It didn't matter if you had a kid with you or not. It didn't matter if your grandma was with you. If one of these cats seen you, it was over. They was letting that thing go. Raheem find himself with these guys one day. See, Raheem never put in no work. So they used to clown Raheem like, man, you ain't really real, man. Go back to the suburbs. Man, you, you ain't really down. You ain't real. All this and that. Raheem like, man, what I got to do to show y'all cats that I'm down? They say, all right, Raheem. We going to send you on a mission. We want you to go rob this gas station, okay? Rob the gas station. The store clerk doesn't have a gun. He just keep a baseball bat in the back. And no, I'm not talking about juice. This is a real life story. So he like, all right, cool, bet. So Raheem end up going in there later on that night. He walk in there, he pull out the gun. Give me the money, give me the money. Well, the stir clerk gives him the money. And what do Raheem do? 
he panics and a gun go off. Raheem never been into no real trouble. Raheem right now is facing 25 to life for armed robbery and first degree murder. That gun went off. When you commit a robbery and you introduce a weapon, it's armed robbery. That charge, that robbery charge is enhanced now. On top of, they looked at his Instagram page and see that he was hanging with these guys from the projects. I'm not going to say their names. I'm not even going to say the name of their group. But he got a gang enhancement charge on top of that. Extra 10 years. See, what y'all street cats don't know, that's in these gangs, that's in these crews, that's posting your crimes all over the internet, you do know that in the Constitution, that you are now considered a terrorist. Gang members are now considered as terrorists. Look it up. When his mother and father found out what happened, they broke down. We raised Raheem right. Why would Raheem do this? Why? We broke our backs to give Raheem a good life. And this is how he repay us. You see, the mama and the daddy wanted him to get out of there. They put up the house. Bill was set at 300000 You can pay 10%. That's 30000 They have to put up the house. That store clerk that Raheem popped, he had a lot of love in the hood. A lot of guys that was locked up knew him. And they wasn't feeling Raheem for what he did to him. See, some of these guys... Growing up, the store dude used to let them come in there and sell they you-know-what. The store dude used to let them hide their guns when the police would run up. So a lot of these cats that was locked up, they wasn't feeling that. Uh-uh, they wasn't feeling that at all. So here go Raheem on his first day of being locked up. The word is spreading around in the county. This is the guy right here that popped the store dude. Oh, word? Yeah, we gonna tighten that head up. Right. Uh-huh. So Raheem, he's in a bullpen. He's talking on the phone to his mama. Some dude walked up to him like, hey, ain't you dude that uh killed so-and-so? He looked at him, he was like, yeah, yeah, why? Dude took off on him. Bam, 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 bam. Worked Raheem out right there in the bullpen. Stretched him out. Knocked him unconscious. Just walked off. Dude stepping over him like he just a piece of meat. His mama on the other end. Raheem, 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 are you okay, baby? Raheem, oh God, oh, Raheem. Raheem is knocked unconscious. Raheem catching them Z's, counting sheep. Raheem finally wakes up. They, they serve in trays at this point in time. Raheem is disoriented. He like, what the heck is going on? What the heck just happened? Then his memory come back to him. And he's like, oh man, somebody just knocked me out. He walk up to the door to get his tray. When he grab his tray, and turned to the right to go take a seat. Somebody walked up to him and grabbed, snatched this tray out of his hand and said, do something. They took his tray. They took his meal. Raheem ain't about to eat it here. You see, Raheem and then with the big boys now. Raheem should have stayed in school. Well, now, Raheem got to deal with the consequences of his actions. You see, the moral of this story is that you ain't got to hang around certain people to fit in. You ain't got to, if you if you don't smoke or drink or pop pills or sip lean, don't start. It's not cool. I know this sounds kind of cliche, but say no. Say no to drugs. You are your own man. You are your own woman. Be a leader. Say no. Because everything I just named is only going to contribute 
to break your body down. It ain't no positive effect at all. Raheem would go on to get bailed out. When he got processed out, his mama screamed when she seen him. This eye was closed right here. That eye was closed from getting socked out. I wish I could tell y'all Raheem got a happy ending, but he don't. So Raheem mother gets him in the car. Oh, baby, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, mama. I'm okay. I'm good. Raheem, why? Why? Why did you do it, Raheem? I don't know, mama. I don't know, mama. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back there, mama. Oh, Raheem. Oh, why did you do this? Oh, God. Why? Why? Raheem know why. Raheem went to hang out with the Project Boys. Raheem wasn't a leader. He was a follower. Y'all better take notes and listen to me, man. I'm trying to save one of y'all out there that might be in this situation, that might be pre in this situation. Might not be the same situation, but dang, they're close. If somebody call you and ask you to do something that can get you sent away to the penitentiary for the rest of your life, for the rest of your days, they not good for you. They not good for you. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. When you locked up, they're not going to write you. They're not going to send you no money for your commissary. They're not going to pick up that jail call. I'm going to tell y'all one of the realest things. And all the jail guys know this. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. Ain't nobody thinking about you no more. You locked up. You, you were here locked up with me. Scum of the earth. Yeah. Scum of the... Congratulations. You are locked up now with me, which is the scum of the earth. What we gonna do up in here all day? Lift weights? Farts? Smell each other farts? What we gonna do in here? Make cook-ups for 40, 50 years? So Raheem in the car with his mama. He like, Ma, where's dad? Oh, dad's at work, but he'll be home soon. They pull up to the house. His mama say, wait, Raheem. She look right into her son's eyes. She say, Raheem, tell me you didn't do that. You didn't do that, Raheem, did you? He said, mama, I, and then he just started crying. And then she started crying. Now, mama felt so much hurt and pain. This was the baby boy that came out of her, that she raised. Just imagine, think about, think about somebody that you love dearly and you know they in a world of trouble that they cannot get out of. This, was, this is what was going on through this mother's mind. After they got the crying together, Raheem stepped out the car. Then his mama got out the car. It happened so fast. All you heard was Raheem say, oh, shoot that everything went black. Everything went black for his mama. Somebody hopped out the bushes to air Raheem out, but instead got his mama. Oh, ma, mama, please. Please wake up, mama. Please, I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry, somebody help. Somebody help. Please help. Somebody help me. Mama, please wake up. Oh, Mama, please wake up. He go back into the car, grab his mother's purse, and grab the cell phone to call 911. 911 emergency, how can I help you? Please come. We at such and such address. Please come. Somebody shot my mother. Please stand by. Car come. <clears throat> Police come 20 minutes later. Y'all know how Detroit police get down. 20 minutes later, they ask him what happened. I don't know, man. Somebody jumped out the bushes and they killed my mama, man. They killed my mama. Just calm down, son. Calm down. Now the daddy pull up. Oh, he loses it. No. No. 
What? What happened? No. This is your fault. This is your fault. Raheem, this is your fault. Police got to restrain him. Police got to restrain dad. Just get crazy out there. When you out on bail, zero police contact. I'm going to say that again. When you are out on bail, that means zero police contact. Well, Raheem ends up getting locked back up by revolt. He violated his bond. He forfeited his bond. They locked him up. Yeah, we live in a messed up world, but it is what it is. And now he's facing this long stint in prison. Raheem would go on and cop out to 30 years in prison. Raheem had a hard time while locked up. When I say a hard time, I mean he had a hard time. His first five years there, I'm not going to say what happened to him. What happened to him happens to a lot of young guys that find their way in the prison system with older men that have been locked down since the 70s, the 80s. For the first five years, Raheem had it bad. Raheem would go on in his eighth year while being locked up. He figured, you know what? This can't be my reality. My mother's gone. My daddy cut me off. Don't nobody write me. The cats from the projects, they abandoned me. His first five years, he was getting beat up dang there every week just off the strength of him taking out the store guy. And the store guy had a lot of love from a lot of people. Raheem couldn't deal with the pressure of prison. So you know what he did? He wrote a letter to anybody that would find it. He said, I can't deal with this no more. I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry, God. He got a bed sheet and well, y'all can fill in the blanks. Share this video. Hit that like. Somebody need to hear my voice today so you don't end up like Raheem. This is Lockdown 88. I'm out. The Dante Show. They put this old black man in my cell. Dude had to been about 65, 70 years old. You could tell he'd been down for most of his life. He'd been locked up longer than he'd been out in the real world. This dude was state struck, institutionalized. Prison is all he haven't ever known. So they put him in my cell and I'm laying at the bottom. When he come in there, he got to instantly barking orders to me. He said, hey, you gonna have to get up there on the top bunk. I ain't getting up there. When you use the bathroom, you sit down. So none of that pee get on me. I'm looking at him like, who this dude think he talking to? He get to saying that I need at least two hours out the day for my own alone time I meditate. So you gonna have to get out this cell when I get to meditate and you better not snore. Or you gonna have to put a sock in your mouth or something. I'm like, this dude got me fucked up all the way. He got me fucked up. At this point in time, y'all, I'm 5'11". I'm 235 pounds of mean machine. This dude is about 5'10", 135 pounds soaking wet. There's nothing that he can do that can stop me from putting hands and feet on him if I chose to. So I'm like, hey... This ain't my first rodeo. I'm not giving up this bunk. He like, oh yeah, yes you are. You gonna give it up. You gonna get that bunk up. I got a bad back. I'm getting this bunk. You gonna have to get up there or something gonna happen. I'm like, what's gonna happen? He like, all right, all right. So he walk out the cell. Yo, this dude got me all the way messed up. I'm gonna have to hurt this dude seriously. So he comes back with a guard. And the guard like, yeah, you gonna have to get up on top, man. He got a bad back. He got a medical excuse that he, he got to get the bottom bunk. So he like, yeah, I told him. I already told him. He ain't want to listen. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm not about to argue with the deputy. I just came from the hole. So I'm not trying to go back to the hole. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I pack my stuff up. And I put it at the top. I'm thinking to myself, like, you know what? I'm going to have to hurt this dude. So he down there, steady running his mouth, talking about, yeah, you young dudes around here. Y'all ain't got no respect for nobody. Y'all walk around here with y'all chest out. If this was back in the old days, I would have did this and I would have did that to you. I'm like, hey, listen, old man, you better watch your damn mouth. How you talk to me before I do something bad to you. 
He like, you ain't going to do nothing to me. You ain't going to do nothing to me. I, listen, y'all, this dude had a bad, funky attitude. He did not know how to talk to people at all. He done went through life just angry, just an angry old man. I get it. You've been locked down longer than I've been alive, okay? But you got yourself in here, just like I'm in here. You is no better than I am, and I'm no better than you is. So it is what it is. So I'm like, hey, man, I ain't going to be too many I ain't going to be too many bees. Now he calling me bees and talk about, yeah, you little young bees and all this and that. I would have pulled up on you with a knife and I would have took your manhood and y'all ain't real men around here and this and that. So I'm letting it ride because he old and I know that if I put my hands on him, I might break any part of his body that I touch. While locked up, that's a no-no, man. You can't call nobody gay. If they not gay, you can't call nobody a snitch. And you can't call nobody a bee. So I'm like, hey, listen, man, you ain't going to keep calling me no B. And he's like, what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So so he leave out the cell. And one of my homeboys come in like five minutes later. Like, hey, you, hey, you know your cellie down there telling on you, right? I said, what are you talking about? He like, yeah, man, he going around telling everybody that you threatening to beat him up and pressing him and all this and that. And I'm like, Tch. a couple guys come up there. And they like, yo, D, can I talk to you right quick? I'm like, what's up? They like, man, you really pressing the old man like that? So I'm like, no, nah, man, dude just got a real bad attitude. So now it's lockdown. I go in the cell and I'm over there brushing my teeth. He come in the cell and he like, oh, no, you can't brush your teeth until the morning time. And I'm like, hey, man, you not finna tell me what to do up here. He like, what? What, man? You ain't gonna tell me what you ain't gonna tell me what I'm not gonna do up here. So I said, hey, listen, I was in this cell first. I said, man, what's up with you, man? Why you why you at why you like that, man? He like, no, I just I don't like you little young guys, man. I don't like y'all, I don't like nothing about y'all. Y'all just think y'all so tough and all this and that. I'm like, dude, I didn't even say nothing to you, man. You the one came in here acting all crazy, barking these demands at me like you done lost your mind. And he like, man, like I said, man, I don't care. I don't care, man. I don't care, man. You don't brush your teeth at night, man. You brush your teeth in the morning. Cause you ain't finna change up what I got going on. I've been locked up longer than you've been born. That's all he keeps saying. I've been locked up longer than you've been born. Y'all don't got no respect. I'm trying my best, y'all. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best not to put hands on this man. So then I jump on my bunk. I notice he takes a lot of pills at night. I don't know what these pills are for, but he got a lot of them. And he take about 10 of them at night. So I'm laying down one night and I'm like, hey, pops, what you taking all them pills? He like, ain't none of your mother effing business. Ain't none of your mother effing business. I'm like, I'll just ask you a question. You ain't got to catch an attitude. He was like, well, if I didn't send for you, don't come for me. And all this and that. I'm like, all right, man, whatever. As the days progress, I'm trying to stay out this dual way. It gets to a point where anything I do, anything I say, he got a problem with it. He keeps smacking his teeth. He keeps doing this. Every time I say something, he'll do this. And I'm like, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. He just keep doing things to irritate me. One day I had enough and I jumped off my bunk. He got to say something crazy, talking about you going to get out my cell or I'm going to cut you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that to you. So I had enough. So I jump off my bed and I'm like, hey, man, what's up? What you want to do? What you want to do? He was like, what you want to do? So he tried to lift up. So I grabbed him and I pushed him down on the bed and I held him down on the bed. And he was like, you better let me. So I got my hand right here and I put it on his mouth. His eyes got real big at this time like that. I said, you better shut your ass up before I kill you up in this, kill you up in this cell. He's like, get off me, get off me. I was like, man, I'll kill you up in here, man. You better not say nothing else to me. So I took my hand off his mouth. Now he's like, help. So I put his hand back on the mouth. I'm like, man, you better shut your ass up before I kill you up in here, man. So I'm roughing him up on the bed and I'm jacking him up. And I'm like, you better shut your dang mouth, man. Be quiet. Be quiet. So this goes on for about five minutes. So I take my hand off his mouth. I said, you good? You good? He's like, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm, I'm good, man. So I got up off the bed and I stood over there by the cell. So he got up off the bed and he stood there with his fist balled up. And he was like, yeah, fight me now. Fight me now. Yeah, I'm up now. I'm up now. I'm like, I said, man, chill out before I hurt you, man. He got to walking up on me. And I said, listen, man, you better chill out. So he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm up now. Fight me like a man. Fight me like a man. Now he getting loud. Like, yeah, fight me like a man. Fight me like, like a man. You gonna try to you gonna try to beat me up while I'm laying down? 
So he's being so loud now. Now other inmates like, yo, what's going on down there? Hey, Dante, leave the old man alone. And other people like, hey, man, y'all fight, man. Hey, man, knock that nigga. Knock him out, Dante. Or they, or, or people or, and other guys yelling like, and then you got dudes yelling out, man, that old man about to sock Dante out. So the guards hear this. So dude walk up on me and I'm like, man, chill out. So because I know if 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 I hit this dude, I'm going to break every bone in this dude's body. So the guards, so a guard come up there to see what's going on. And he like, what's going on? He like, he like, man, he just attacked me. He just attacked me. I'm like, man, I didn't do nothing to this dude. This dude crazy. So he, so the guard like, y'all better calm down. Y'all better chill, man. Y'all better chill. I say, I'm good. I'm good. He like, no, no, forget that. Forget that. Bam. He took off on me. Hit me right here in the face. Bam. It didn't hurt. It, it kind of like stunned me a little bit. Like, boom. He kind of stunned me. I'm like, this dude just really took off on me. The guard was like, get back, get back. You get into the um old man. So the old man was looking like, oh, I messed up. Like, what's Dante about to do to me? I wasn't about to do nothing to him. Guard already seen him attack me. So the guard come in there. He walk up to the old man like, don't put your hands on him no more. I could throw you in the hole. Don't put your hands on him no more. So him and a CO going back and forth. They arguing back and forth. Well, he touched me. He tried to choke me out on the bed. This and that. He straightened my life and all this and that. So they going back. The guard like, well, I didn't see that. I seen you hit him. So they going back and forth. So the guard like, you know, I'm tired of this. So he grabbed him, snatched the old man. The old man like, ah, ah, you hurt me. You hurt me. Ah, you hurt me. You hurt me. Get your hands off me. So he put him in the handcuffs and he get him up out of there. He take him to the hole. Now Pops is going down the tears, screaming, hollering, help, help. He trying to kill me. He trying to kill me and all this and that. So they take him to the hole. About 10 minutes later, the sergeant come up there to my room and he like, yo, what what, what was going on up here? I was I was like, listen, ever since he got in here, man, he been giving me a hard time. He been pressing me. He just he just got a real bad attitude. And I was laying down and I jumped out the bed like, dude, don't touch me. Your deputy, he came up here. He seen what was going on and he seen him you know, punch me in the face. And that's when the deputy came in here and grabbed him out of here. And so he was like, okay, okay, cool, cool. So he wrote it up or whatever. So I went to go lay down. So about two hours later, two guards come in and tell me to roll it up and tell me to put my hands behind my back. I'm like, what's going on? They was like, Are you being charged with assault. I'm like, assault? They was like, yeah, you got into a fight with the old man. I was like, man, I, I did not touch that man. That ain't for us to discuss right now. You just got to go to the hole. I ended up being in a hole five months. I was found guilty of assaulting pops because of this dude couldn't keep his mouth in check. They say sticks and stones would break my bones, but words would never hurt. Yeah, words shouldn't hurt. When you got somebody on you day in and day out being so negative it don't matter if they're in their 70s or early 80s you get tired of it. well mission accomplished he got me up out that cell and it is what it is y'all hit that like button this is lockdown 88 i'm out he got really on you bop, 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 bop. And you busted back but you hitting that right though Let me get them large fries, gun battle, and the McDonald's drive through. So you get up out of that skirt. Dude still in the middle of the driveway. Pop, 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 pop. Ah! You hit the corners. Boom, boom, hitting corners, right? It's finna get real dark. When you look over to the right, you see somebody creeping in your mirror on the side. He creeping. It's on now, player. He creeping now, with that player. chopper. Time to collect. You already got your strap on your lap. So you say, oh, so you Grab a strap. A lot of you cats think this is a game. This video is about somebody getting turned out while locked up. But I got to give y'all a backstory. Because there's a lot of you cats out there that's doing exactly what I'm talking about. Stepping on a community. On demon time. I got to get my op. I got to get my get back. I got to get my lick. When a man that comes into the system and he's a heterosexual man, he's a straight man, and he get violated by another man, 
in a sexual way. There's nothing funny. There's nothing cute about it. It's not a laughing matter. In fact, when us inmates hear that, we don't laugh at that. We don't joke about it. We think that shit is despicable. We think it's disgusting. I always tell y'all, I can't tell another man how to program. Some men been locked down for 20 plus years. Some men feel like they ain't never going to see another woman in a day of their life outside of the guards and maybe the counselor. But most men while locked up will not ever touch another woman. So they go that route. They go the gay route. Some of these men feel like that. They not even gay. Some of these men feel like, yo, it is what it is. Some of these men don't have no family on the outside that's supporting them. They ain't getting no letters. They ain't getting no visits. So in reality, this is their world. This is how they are programming. Sometimes it might seem like I'm only picking on the young white boys. But wait a minute. Black, Mexican, Chinese boys get turned out. It don't really matter what color it is. However, all you jail dudes out there, y'all know. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know when you see a white boy come in there, what, 17, 18, 19, 20, all the way up to maybe 28 years old. Fragile. They look weak. And I'm not talking about all white boys. So stop playing these military mind games, y'all. Y'all know I'm not a racist. By now, y'all know that. I'm just putting out the education part of this. They come in there fragile. They come in there weak. They come in there timid. In the real world, they say never judge a book by its cover. That's true. However, while locked up, it's a twisted, wicked world. So you got to judge a book by its cover. If you come in there like this, all frail and jumpy, you're going to be a target. The wolves going to come out and they're going to surround you. Maybe I should put it like this. You come in there like this, looking all scared and all timid, sharks is going to start surrounding you. They smell the blood in the air. It don't always got to end with somebody getting or or turned out. You got the extortion game too. We going to get into that later. This video right here is simply to warn all the new young inmates that might find themselves in the prison system. So here you go, a young inmate. Congratulations. You have just made it into prison. You are now doing 20 years when you was out in your neighborhood with that black, 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 shooting the whole neighborhood up, seeing your ops. There you go right there. Oh, yeah, I'm about, I'm about to get them. I'm about to get them. Pop, 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 pop. Rest in peace, right? Your op is on the T-shirt. The mother's crying. The family want justice. For some strange reason, your name keep getting brought up. Yeah, you did that. You did that. That's your body. Now you in a predicament where his family want that get back. What goes around comes around. One of the family members that's like that, he see you. The young boys say, it's up, it's up. And he just like you. He a stepper. So what he do when he see you? He get to he step. He commits to step on you. So you pulls up to the local McDonald's. You order you a McChicken with light mayo, a large high C with light ice. Matter of fact, you got two apple pies, cherry apple pies with that. And a large Coke. You always got your head on the swivel because you know you got beef out here in the street. So after you complete your order, you looking around, $8.99. Please proceed to the next window and you cruise up. When you look over to the right, you see somebody creeping in your mirror on the side. He creeping. It's on now, player. He creeping with that chopper. Time to collect. You already got your strap on your lap. So you say, oh, so you grab the strap, go this way. He already on you. You busting back, but you hitting that right though. And you busting back. You hit that right. Pop, 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 pop. Gun battle. Let me get them large fries in the McDonald's drive through. So you get up out of that skirt. Dude still in the middle of the driveway. Pop, 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 pop. You hitting corners. Boom, boom. Hitting corners, right? It's finna get real dark. It's about to get real dark. And it's about to get real graphic. You hit a corner, then you hit another corner. You in that Dodge Challenger. Hellcat. The demon, right? The red eye. You, you going about a hundred. You didn't see the little girl on her pink bike with the straws on the side. She already looked both ways. She already looked to her left and she looked to her right. She did what she supposed to did. Her mother and her father and grandma taught her. So when you cross the street, baby, hold on, hold on, little baby, when you cross the street, this grandma talking, when you cross the street, baby, make sure you look to the left and make sure you look to the right. Let me make sure your helmet on tight. Okay, there you go, grandbaby. Mwah. So she does her job and she looked to the left 
and she looked to the right. You doing your job as being a criminal, a demon in these streets, a big stepper, right? You doing your job, causing destruction and mayhem in the community. You hit that corner, here go little girl, and here come you, 100 miles per hour. It's too late. You can't stop that. You can't stop it. It's up. Head on collision. Bam! Baby girl goes flying in the air in the pink bike with her. Do I got y'all attention yet? Way over there. You don't even know what really happened. You thought it was a dog. You just keep going. That's gone. You hit a couple more corners. You pull up to your spot. Jump out. All out of breath. Oh, oh, man, man, man. Man, I got to get up out of here, man. Man, I'm, man, man, I'm telling you, man, when I find out who did that, it's up. Let's go back across town. You left that little girl, lifeless body, out there on the street. People coming outside. The mama breaks down. Oh, my baby. My baby, who did this? Who did this? The baby mango. I got to get wrong with y'all. I need to paint this picture for y'all. A lot of you cats think this is a game. This video is about somebody getting turned out while locked up. But I got to give y'all a backstory. Because there's a lot of you cats out there that's doing exactly what I'm talking about. Stepping on the community. On demon time. I got to get my eye. I got to get my get back. I got to get my lick. I got to show everybody that I'm willing to bust my gun at any time. I don't care if we at church. If I see you walk into church with grandma with the big hat. I'm busting. A bullet might go right through grandma's big hat. Oh, she better duck. I'm putting a bullet through it. You supposed to be in here worshiping Jesus, and I got to worry about a bullet going through my grandma's big old hat. Come on, man. Y'all know why they come to play? Y'all hit that like button and stop playing games. So, baby girl, her body is lifeless. Her flesh on her body is torn, ripped. She got a hand that's limp, and it's not because her body isn't alive. Yeah, she's not alive, but her flesh is torn. Got gates of flesh open with blood coming out. Got her little chest right here, ripped. Her body was hit at 100 miles per hour. Bam! And when she hit the cement, not the soft grass, at 100 miles per hour, ain't nothing soft when you hit it. At 100 miles per hour, when her body hit that cement, it scraped up a lot. It took chunks of flesh off. Beautiful baby girl. 8, 9, 10 years old. Sometimes when you do things in this world... Every action has a reaction. Every action has a reaction. When you put, when you think, let me tell you something about you criminals. And we're going to get back to the story. Just hold up. You criminals out there that think y'all so slick. You know, when y'all putting the bullets in the gun, when y'all putting the bullets in the clip, yeah, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them, and I'm not going to get caught. I'm going to shave off my facial hair. I'm going I'm to wear these gloves and stuff, right? I'm going to wear these leather gloves and all that. Dressing all black, right? You do know that most criminals, when they commit crimes in this day and age, in the 2020s, there's cameras everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. When you put in them bullets in the clip, your fingerprints, your DNA is all over the tip, all over the tip of that bullet. You're going to jail. It's just a matter of time. You're going to jail. My motto was this. Stop committing crimes. Go get a job. Let's get back to the story. So they holding baby girl. Oh, my baby. Why? Who would do this? Who would do this? And you know what? For the people that are standing around, a nigga did this. Yeah. Somebody black did this. We know a nigga did this. Yeah. I ain't come here to play, y'all. Next thing you know, you know, grandma, grandma out there, baby, please wake up. Please, baby, please wake up. You got grandma right here. You got the mama right here. You got daddy. He get the word. He over there working at GM. He get the word that his baby is not here no more. He breaks down on the line. He in the factory working at GM. Doing what he's supposed to do. Doing what, doing what you supposed to be doing instead of you spinning the blocks on your ops. Ordering from McDonald's. Get into a fallout gun battle. And McDonald's drive through when you should have been somewhere working in the post office. When you should have been somewhere out of college getting your education on. 
or you should have been in the warehouse. Hell, you can even get a paper route. They pay about five, six hundred dollars a week. But now nah, you want to spin the block and be on demon time. Every action has a reaction. So now daddy is gunning. Get gunning. He run up out the building. He run up out his job. Supervisor like, yo, where you going? I got to go, man. He go. He gunning. He getting to the scene. Police done pull it up. They got it all roped off. The whole neighborhood out there. And what dude do that did this? He's smoking. Right? He getting blowed. So, days go by. Weeks go by. We, know, we all know how it goes down in these inner cities. Police is overwhelmed. Police get cause after cause after cause after cause. So they... They backlog is so backed up. It's like, yo, we trying to, the, the detectives like, we're going to get, we're going to solve this case. We're going to solve this case. Children are off limits. So the detective talking to the parents, we're going to get them. We're going to get whoever did this. Oh, the watch commander told the chief of police that, yo, we got to get this guy. It don't matter. I don't care what y'all got to do. I don't get I don't care if y'all got it. It's unlimited overtime. Get out there and apprehend this criminal. Ain't that pressure is on. They banging on the police, pulling up, banging on doors, asking questions. They tighten it. Witnesses, statements, all that. Yeah, man, he was in the blue challenger. Yeah, everybody talking. When kids are involved, I don't want to hear that, oh, no snitch. I'm not going to snitch. No, you better tell. You Let me find out a kid got hit by one of these criminals. Let me find out a kid caught a straight bullet because one of these damn demons out here want to act the damn fool and cause destruction and mayhem on this earth. I'm calling the police. 911. Immediately. And if anybody feels some type of way about me talking about I'm calling the police, if you approach me with that BS, it's going to be immediate violence. And then I'm going to call the police after I put that violence on you. Now hit that like button. Yeah, I'm on my charge to wipe. That's right. I'm going to call the police. Oh, they cracking down. It's just a matter of time. Behind closed doors, the detectives know who it is. They know who it is. A ring door camera. Caught him hitting the corner and caught the whole license plate. Y'all know how these criminals is. He had the car registered into his mama's name. So the police get together. They squad up. Boom! Kick the door in. Mama laying on the couch watching Golden Girls. Smoking a cigarette. Eating some peanuts. Boom! Ah! Get down! Get down! Ah! Turn around. They grab mama. Throw mama on the floor. Put her hands behind her back. Zip tied her. Ah! Where's so and so? Where's so and so? Clear, clear. They go in the basement. Clear. Go in the attic. Clear. Ah! Ah! Now I tell you what, I like you, and I want you. Now we can do this the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. But oh, y'all on demon time? Come on, this is hell. Prison is hell. Come on, let's go. No, no, no. No. You are a demon, right? God made hell for the fallen angels that rebel in heaven. Come on, let's go. Y'all see this black? This is, this is the abyss. This is the gates of hell. Let's go. What's going on? What's going on? I don't know what's going on. Where's your son at? He's over there at his girlfriend's house. Where's that at? Get an address. They get a car. Oh, we got him stopped over here around the corner at a traffic stop. This dude drinking and driving, swerving. Just going about his life like he ain't just murdered a little girl. Like he just not got into a shootout and makes Donald's drive through. So they get him. I wish I was the arresting officer. They might would have had to suspend me. I would have walked up to the car, step out. I would have hoped he would have resisted. Would have grabbed. Never mind. We ain't even gonna do all that. Should I do it? 
Yamador. Step out the car. Step out the car. Get your hands up on the car. Put your hand behind your back. Would have got the jack in his arm up. Police brutality. Police brutality. Yeah, get them phones out. Yeah. Officer Dante is in full effect. Get them cameras out. Oh, oh, he hurt me. He hurt me. Ah, oh, he hurt me. Get your hands behind your back now. You know what I would have did? Y'all know when the police put you in the back of the patrol car? They put your hand on top of your head and, and, and push it down to get you in? Well, I was going to remove my hand. I would have just... Push them in there. <laughs> I don't condone violence, y'all. Y'all know I'm just playing. Hit that like button. So he get carted off to jail. Now, we gonna get past all the jail talk, past all the trial. He was found guilty. They gave him a two-life sentence with no possibility of parole. He should have took that plea deal. He would have got out after 20 years. But he wanted to fight it, and he blew trial. So, bam, life without the possibility of parole. Now he in there with us. Criminal. Felons, gang bangers. We know what you did. Yeah. Yo, think about your case, homeboy. We all know about it. You know what us throwaways feel? Yeah, we throwaways. Everybody that's locked up in prison, like myself, everybody that's in jail for the time that we in there, we throwaways. We expendables. Out of sight, out of mind. Our people don't care about us no more. We ain't out here in the real world no more. Locked up with outcast. And you know what? what? What we can't stand is a man that violates women, violates children. And you know what you did? You took a child's life. Forget all the street things you did. Nah, we don't care about that rep. It wasn't my job to exact no vengeance or justice. Nah, there's cats in there to push that blade on a man. Now, if static came my way, oh, y'all already know. I'm the first one to push that blade immediately. He comes in there, word already went out, the guards being dirty like they are, put the word out. Yo, that child killer up in here. You got this guy. I told y'all about him already. We going to call him Fleece Johnson. So Fleece Johnson, now this is the entertainment part. I can't give out the real name of this guy because he's still locked up. And if I get locked up, I don't want to run across this dude. He might see me be like, yo, you made that video about me. I feel some type of way. And then I'm going to have to push that blade. So we're going to call him Fleece Johnson. So Fleece Johnson walks up to him on the yard. The word is already out. There's a green light on him. So Fleece Johnson like, nah, I'm going to take care of him. That's my type. He ain't here doing life? Oh, that's my type. Mm. Young, sexy little black chocolate little thing. So he approached him. He like, so where you from? Hold on, hold on. Let me get my fleece voice on. Say, uh, where you from? Man, I'm from the D. Oh, from the from Detroit, huh? You you one of them northern boys, huh? Yeah, what, what, yeah what, why, what's up? Nah, I'm just, I just want to tell you like straight out. How long you got up in here? Fleece already know that dude got life without parole. He ain't never getting out. Man, I got, they gave me an L. Oh, you were here for the long haul, huh? Well, check this out. Now, I tell you what, I like you, and I want you. Now, we can do this the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. So, dude, look at him like, what? I said, I don't repeat myself. And he slaps him. Backhand him. Bow! Backhand him. Let me give y'all this. Let me give y'all the specs of the guy that he just backhand. This guy's 20 years old. He weighs no more than 135 pounds, soaking wet. He ain't got no fight in him. No fight. Never got into a fist fight a day of his life. But knew how to grab that gun and blap, 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 blap. That's all he knew how to do. He never knew how to go hand-to-hand -hand combat. I don't repeat myself. Bam. He like, oh, man, why you hit me? Why you hit me? I like you. I want you to come. Ain't you in cell 32 on the second tier? I want you. Hey, fleece. This is the guards. Hey, fleece. What you over there doing? Oh, nothing. I'm just talking to the young guy. You know. Hey, Fleece, you need to back up. Okay, okay. I like you. I want to see you. I'm going to see you tonight. And we're going to have a conversation. Dude like, man, hey, I don't want no problems, man. I don't want no problems. No, no, no. We ain't going to have no problems. We definitely ain't going to have no problems. We're going to... We, we, we're going to make this right. That's, I'm going to be by your cell. And I know where you're at. So, I'll be seeing you. At this time, everybody on the yard looking like, oh, Fleece making this move. Oh, they look at Fleece. There you go. Don't nobody got no compassion for dude. We know what he did. The way I feel about the situation is none of my business. 
If this happened to, it's none of my business. I feel sorry for the child. Terrible loss. That's a whole generation that's gone because this clown went to get into shootouts. Every action has a reaction. The life that he chose to live, this is what got him here. When you decide to pick up that gun, know that there's a consequence that can come with that. Sometimes it might happen in the long run. Sometimes it'll happen immediately. And well, in this case, you live by the gun, you die by the gun. But in this case, well, he gonna, he, he gonna wish he died. Let's get to it. Everybody looking over there at him, seeing what his next move gonna be. Fleece done walked off and he talking to a couple of his homeboys. So dude just looking bewildered like. So he go up to a guard. He say, hey, um, is there any way I can go? Um, can, can I leave? Can, can, can I go somewhere? I, I don't feel safe out here. The guard like, inmate, get back. The guards had no love for this guy. Everybody knew what he did. So he is, yo, the guards like, excuse my language, y'all, but the guards like, fuck him. So he turns his back and he got his head low. He just walking. Some random guy just jogging the track. See him walking with his head low and come out of nowhere like, bam, cold cock. Give him a cold right. Don't feed him. Where I'm from, when somebody sneak you and you don't see that punch coming, they don't feed you. He don't feed him. Bam. Dude went to bed. Boom. Lay right there. He hit that dirt. He went, boom. Slow motion. Right? We was like, boom. Dust went up. Bam. Put him to bed. He wakes up. It's time for us to go in. Dude stepping over him. Some dude spitting on him. Y'all know me. I'm the Christian guy. I'm the guy that pushed that Jesus line. Yeah, eventually I probably would have hollered at him. My soul was conflicted because of what he did. He took a child life. I didn't care about the gun battle that happened in McDonald's Park a lot. We all done had gun battles. We all done went to war in the streets. We all done stabbed somebody. Somebody done shot somebody. We done seen it all. We done heard it all. But when a child is at play, even me, the Christian man that I am, the Bible pushing dude that I am while locked up, I feel some type of way. But I couldn't put that out there because I had to lead by example. So I stayed away. So, yeah, eventually I might have would have said something to him. But at that point in time, my faith was challenged at that point. So, you know, he eventually get up, shake it off. Scared like a scared mouse. And he walking through. So he gets to his cell. And the CEO walk past and say, oh boy, you in trouble. You in trouble. He like, I can only imagine how this dude is feeling at this point in time. You hear about these stories about men getting turned out. You hear about prison. I like you. You hear about all the horrors that prison has to offer. And then you caught dead smack in the middle of that. You want a nightmare that, that you would never wake up from unless you take your own life. A lot of these guys also that be going through that traumatic stress, they turn, they turn to mind altering substances. Okay. I can't say the words because you know how you two like to play games with me, but they turn to mind altering substances. To try to get away from the nightmare. So when the so when the guard tells him that, his whole continence just drop. He don't know what to expect. He living in a living nightmare. I don't want to sound cruel. I don't want to sound evil. But what about the parents of that baby girl? What about the victim? What about the baby girl? What about her family? I don't even know if she has siblings or not. Imagine you got a sibling and you eight or nine years old and you play with them every day. Y'all do things together every day. And then one day that, that sibling is not there no more. They gone due, due to some criminal shit. Due, due to somebody want to be on demon time. Well, prison is hell and demons, the gates of hell is open, baby. So come on there. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, you a demon? Oh, y'all on demon time? Come on. This is hell. Prison is hell. Come on. Let's go. No, no, no. No. You are a demon, right? God made hell for the fallen angels that rebel in heaven. Come on. Let's go. Y'all see this black? This is, the, this is the abyss. This is the gates of hell. Let's go. You said you want to be a demon. This is where demons go. Let's go. So, 
he's sitting there. He like, oh man, I, 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 I can't take this no more. I can't take this no more. Oh, this female guard walked past. Now this female guard, she has like compassion for inmates. No matter what they did, no matter what they done, she feel like once the judge senses you, the inmate should not be judging you. But it is what it is. I agree with her. And then I don't, and then I don't agree with her at the same time. But hey, but hey, who cares about my opinion? This only the Dante show, right? She walks up to him and she like, hey, it, it's, it'll be okay, young man. I, I know what you did. I, you're going to have a hard time in here, but just know I'm here for you. I mean, I don't really know what she could, really could do for him. And plus, you got fleece on his ass. Hey, psh, dude just got knocked out on the yard. I mean, what what really can she really do? So she talking to him. She's like, yo, can I pray with you? And he, right now, he, he taking any good, he taking any good piece of humanity that he possibly can grasp on. So he's sobbing and she's praying over him and she walk out. I'm going to say we went on lockdown. Well, when I say lockdown, I don't mean like we all in trouble. It's bedtime. So we all in our cells and it's about 11 o'clock. He in the cell all by himself. The night shift guards come on. And this is where this story takes that gruesome turn of being turned out. So it's, it's around by 1130-ish. Here I go, read my Bible. I'm reading. I hear a cell door pop. And then I hear another cell door pop. As soon as I heard that, I reached under my mattress and I grabbed that blade. Y'all ain't about to push that politics on me. Ain't nobody finna run up in my cell. See, even though I was a chill dude while locked up, you never know who might be out there that want, that want to get at you for whatever reason. I might have looked past somebody and they thought that I was looking at them and they're like, okay, so he want to look at me. I ha I'm having a bad day. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to get him. I heard that cell door pop. One, two, three. They pop. I lean over. Go under my mattress. Pull out that blade. I'm ready to push it. I see Fleece and I see two other cats right behind Fleece. They walk past my cell. I'm like, what the, what these dudes doing out they cell? Right? Then I hear another cell door pop. It's the young boy, the stepper, the demon. We in hell, y'all. Don't demons go to hell? We in hell. Well, there was a chamber door that got popped open. And three bigger demons was released. And they went to go to another demon cell. When they went in there, I hear, oh, hell, no, help, help, help. You know what I did? I put my headphones on. I laid down and I got to read in my Bible. It was none of my business. Some people would say, justice is served. Some people would say, that's foul. Me, I got to mind my business. I got to mind my business on this one. I'm not the judge and I'm damn sure not the jury. Okay? What that man did in the real world that cost him his life in his ass, literally, I always tell y'all, every action has a reaction. The guards knew. What happened? The guard's the one that popped us. The guard's the one that set it up. I don't know the conversation, but I'm pretty sure Fleece hollered at them. I'm pretty sure the other guards was in cahoots on this. And they let it go down. They violated him. I don't know how long. When I put my headphones on, Now mind my business. The next morning rolls around. It's time for count. When they get to his cell, they call a code. Everybody lock down, lock down. We are back in our cells again. Medical staff come. The sergeant come. The captain come. 
you know, the one with the white shirt. They do a so-called full investigation. Well, we had an electrical issue with the cameras on this block this particular night. So there's no video footage. We don't know what happened. I got to get graphic with y'all. I need all the mothers, all the fathers, all the grandparents, anybody that got a teenage son or a young man that's in their family that might be in the streets. Show them this video. I want them to laugh. I want them to throw the jokes at me. I want them to call me whatever they want to call me. I want, it, I want them to say that I'm capping. I wish I was capping. Ain't just what they say. Oh, it, the word, the new word is cap. And, but y'all do know the new words with the young kids say now it's up. It's up. When y'all out there committing these crimes and thinking y'all going to get away with it. Yeah, you might bust down somebody already. You might have got away with spinning the block a couple times. But wait a minute. Your time is coming. It's just a matter of time. This older man while locked up told me some wise words. He said, Dante, don't worry about that. He going to get his. That man on borrowed time. Oh, he said, dude is on borrowed time. I was playing poker with this cat one day. This is a side story. I was playing poker with this cat one day. He ran up a big debt with me. A hundred dollars, right? A hundred dollars, right? He checked in and went to the hole so he didn't have to pay me. I owed a couple of cats in my pot. That put me in a hole. But thank God I was a hustler in there. I had to give out a whole bunch of free haircuts. I told y'all I was a barber up in there. A whole bunch of free cuts and a whole bunch of cell phone calls. To clear my debt with these other dudes. Because this cat want to run off. You cats out there that's spinning the block. Killing everybody that look just like you. Only tough with cats that look just like you. But when the police whoop, whoop, pull up, put your hands behind your back. You do just like this. Yes, officer. I'm a criminal. I'm going to jail. I don't have no fight with you. I, I don't want to fight with you, Mr. Officer, Mr. Police. No, I just go in the community and I just see another guy that look just like me and blow his head off. Only tough with your own kind, huh? Let's get back to it. And I know I got off topic. I know. I know y'all hate me when I do that, but it is what it is. When they found him, he was on his stomach, ass up. But wait a minute. All you cats out there that work out, everybody that work out, the bodybuilders, y'all especially know what, what I'm about to say. When they found him on his stomach, ass in the air, his asshole was out. I can't make this. I can't make this up. I can't make it up. I can't make this up. Am I lying? Am I lying? Let me know in the comment section. All the cats out there, there's bodybuilders. Can it happen? Can your whole asshole fall out your ass? Your intestines fall out of you? Huh? I'm lying. Yeah, I'm lying. I'm lying. It's all cap. They're like, oh, he kept. Uh. The bodybuilders know. All you prison dudes that really been locked down, y'all know. His ass was in the air and his ass was on the bed. Stay out of prison. Stop committing crimes. Oh, this is a light story. Oh, the next video that I drop, this is light. This is light. This is the Dante Show. Locked down. 88. Y'all make sure y'all bless that cash app. If you have not joined my page, if you have not became a member, make sure you become a member. The Dante Show. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all a story about a guy named Jimmy. Jimmy was the type of dude that was a good dude. 
Well, I'm not going to say he was a good dude because ain't nobody good, but he was a guy that had a nine to five. He had a girlfriend and he was going to college part time. So Jimmy decides to one day go to the bar and there's nothing wrong with going to the bar at all. This particular night, he goes to the bar and he's drinking Hennessy, Patron, mixing the light with the dark. Well, instead of him getting an Uber or ride share, he decides to get behind the wheel and drive. Jimmy, maybe 12 minutes in this ride, head on collision. He murders a husband and a wife, newlyweds, on their way to the airport. This is where the story starts at. So I get a new cellmate and I'm looking at him. And you can tell he, I could tell he ain't never been locked up before. At this point, I'm laying at the top bump, the two man cell. I don't got nobody at the bottom. So when he come in, I instantly hop up to make sure, you know, it ain't an enemy. And I'm just filling him out. And his whole spirit is just gone. He like whippering, saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, what this dude sorry about? Like, what, what is he what is he in here for? Like, uh, if he in here for touching some kids, yo, we, we going to have to get out. He going to have to get up out of here. You know, after he put his stuff on the bed and say, I'm like, yo, what's up with you? And he keeps saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I'm like, all right, man. So I lay back down. And he's still whimpering. You know, some guys on the tail like, hey, man, what's going on down there? You straight? What, what's going on? I'm like, no, man, my celly, he going through it right now. They're like, all right. So I'm like, man, what's up, man? Now, outside of our cell, we didn't have TVs in the cell. We had two TVs on the tier. It, it was a TV that they had put like, okay, so here's the cell like right here. But then outside the cell is a TV on like, you remember in, in high school and middle school and elementary, they put the TVs like on that um, cart thing. It was like that. And they gave us like this long ruler to change the channel and turn the volume up and down. So it was outside my cell like right here. And then somebody, another, like you go down some more, there's a TV and there's a TV. So I'm laying there and I'm just watching the TV and then boom, there it go. Channel 6 News, 10 o'clock. His crime come on TV. And it's him. Newlyweds. Deceased. Rest in peace. Drunk driver. Got his face all over there. Mug shot all over the television. You hear guys down there to my left. You hear guys this way to my right talking hella crap they not knowing that this dude is in my cell oh y'all waiting for me to tell y'all what happened so i'm like yo what's what's i said yo that's you you did that he like yeah man i i never been in trouble before i i'm i'm so sorry i said you ain't gotta apologize to me i'm a criminal just like you homeboy don't be sorry to me be sorry to them people family he said, what you think they gonna do to me? I said, who? He said, the, the, the inmates. I said, probably nothing. I mean, everybody in here, I mean, our, it's, this block is kind of chill, but as long as you ain't touch no kid or nobody, you know, you should, you should be good. I mean, you know, don't, don't let nobody take nothing from you. And, and I'm, I'm gonna be real. This guy wasn't all the way there because I mean, he just two people and he didn't mean it. But this is why I tell y'all stop drinking and driving. Because that one shot of liquor or two shots and you think that you good to drive. But then, well, this is what happens. Long story short, y'all, they gave this man 10 to 15 years. 10 to 15 years. Minimum, he have to do 10 years. Minimum. But... This is, the story doesn't end there with the jail sentence, nah, uh This story doesn't end, it doesn't end too well. In fact, I'm gonna get to the point because I know y'all like for me to get straight to the point. I get it, I get it. Two years into this man's bed, I guess he was having dreams, nightmares, traumatized about what he did. 
because when he mixed that when he mixed that dark with that white liquor and murdered them two people in a car accident, he couldn't handle it no more. He started getting into drugs while locked up. Bad drugs. That had have y'all seen the videos when these guys be all stiff and all foaming at the mouth? Because they done took some some bad or whatever thing they be taking up in there. Well, he was getting high every day to try to take himself out of his situation. It got so bad for this man, he tried to take an attempt. Well, he attempted multiple times to take his own self up out of this world. And where well, one day he finally succeeded. Stop drinking and driving. Stop drinking and driving. Stop. Stop drinking and driving. This is the Dante Show. Y'all hit that like button. Y'all share this video. I'm out. The Dante Show. There was his blood, right? Or so-called blood. He was a younger guy. Black dude. He was what you call a crash dummy, right? Always ready to go, always ready to prove himself, just jump out the window, tell him to do something, he gonna do it with no thought. At this time, it's about, I'm gonna say seven bloods, right? Seven bloods, about 15 regular dudes like me, and maybe like two crips up in this, two crips, right? So he get up in there, and I guess the gang leader that was in our pod was like, Yo, he really wants them two crips to get up, get up out of the pot. So he tell the, the young blood like, yo, if you want to move up, I need for you to get them two up out of here, right? So he sent them on a crash mission. This is what you call a dummy mission, a crash mission. See, the older blood, the OG blood knew that this dude would do anything for him, anything. So what he said was at night at the count, said when they go in that cell, go in there and start sticking them. He said, cool, whatever, no biggie. Next thing you know, he goes in there where the two, let me back up, let me back up. Make sure y'all hit that like button, hit that follow button and share this video. And make sure y'all bless the cash app. He's sharp, he got the steel, right? He goes up in there. I can only hear what's going on. I can only hear what's going on. I'm not seeing what's going on, but I'm telling y'all what I can probably visualize to see what's going on. Cause you got to mind your business. You got to mind your business because if I'm sitting up there at the cell like this, looking in there, somebody would have came over there and did something to me. And I couldn't be able to tell these stories to y'all, right? So next thing you know, he goes in there, closed the door, bad, bad move. Now this dude was like the blood, the young blood was maybe, maybe about six foot, 190, 200 pounds, but not in shape really. The other two, the two Crip dudes, both of them was like 6'1", 6'2", or 6'3", 240, 250 in shape. Big mistake. So he goes in there and closed the door behind him, right? <laughs> he closed the door behind him. And all you hear was boom, 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 boom. When I say they beat the hell out of him. They beat the shit out of him. It got to a point where this dude was squealing. I don't know what they was in there doing to him. No, they didn't rape him. They beat the shit out of him. I'm talking about beat him bad. Beat him bad. When the COs finally went up there and broke it up, I never seen... Have y'all ever seen like... A pancake, like somebody face just got, you see how my face is, right? Are beautiful, perfectly shaped. This dude's face was like smashed, like like this, and this eye all drooped, and nose all lifted and busted, and lip, lip all ripped, like hanging. I'm talking about, oh, I forgot to tell you about the lumps, all the lumps. 
they beat the shit out of him. Yeah, they got in trouble. They went to the hole. I never seen them again. But that dude, I never seen him again neither. Never seen him again either. The young blood, never seen him again. When they got him out of there, he was unconscious. They could have did anything to him. This is a warning to you young gang members out there that's going to jail or going to prison. Sometimes you can and will be used. Sometimes you will have to do something that you don't want to do. Or if you one of them dudes like young blood and don't give a fuck, there's somebody in there waiting in there for you. Right? You might win one or two fights, maybe three or four. But you're never going to get caught one day. And when you answer that call, I don't know if he lived or died. Like I said, I didn't see the two crypt dudes no more. I don't know if they got any jail charges or prison charges. I don't know for doing that. But I never seen him neither. And you want to know what the other bloods were saying? Man, that nigga stupid. He's stupid. I want to win it with them two. And that's why I said it'd be so much unloyalty going on. They sent him on this dummy mission, and then they called him stupid. Sent him on the dummy mission to go in the cell to stab the two Crips. Then after he go in there and get whipped the fuck out, they called him stupid. Low key, I think they just wanted him out of the pot anyway too. So three birds for one stone. How y'all like that? Hit that like button. Hit that follow button. The cash app is up in the bio. I'm out.